Boom. Hello. Hi. <laughs> how are you today, Mick? Great. How are you? Good. So we have your new game, yeah. Deep Stone Catacomb. Oh my God, have I been waiting for this game for a long time? I am so excited yeah, about this too. game. Yeah. <laughs> so let's show the people what it is. There we go. There it is. Deep Stone, Deep Stone Catacomb. We played this on the show a while back. What is going on, cats? Going crazy. Okay. Um, we played this on the show. Oh, there's a cat behind you too. Cats everywhere. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and uh, we finished level one of this, and it was so much fun. It's like a, a light RPG, action-oriented light RPG game. And it is just astounding. And there's a, a great story behind it. And, uh, and you cataloged your whole adventure yeah. playing it yeah. as well. So I'm going to show off the box here. For everyone and you to see. Yeah, that, that looks great. <laughs> it is beautiful in uh, classic Atari style, with the uh, what three video games in one? <laughs> the always deceptive fifty video games yeah. in one cartridge. Yeah, it's like well, there's Pong. There's a slightly variation of Pong. There's another slightly variation of Pong. Then there's tennis, <laughs> which is Pong. No. So you've got three different uh, levels and difficulties for Deep Stone Catacomb, but we'll get into that. Let's right. open it up and do the unboxing part of the unboxing. Oh, open it up. It said the Dark Lord awaits. I love these little uh, add-ons that some, some people put in to the uh, top of the boxes That's when awesome. you open it up. <laughs> it's like a secret message that you can't see until you open it. Yeah. That is great. Deepstone Catacomb. There's the cartridge. Beautiful. Beautiful. Yeah. Classic Atari style. MM2601 Mick Muse. Game number one. Excellent. Uh, yeah, all very standard. There you go. So plug that in. It's got the um, graphics from the front of the box, which looks great. Oh, get a little bonus in here. Oh, it's your ad. Excellent. That you've posted in the forums before. Oh, yeah, yeah. Press fire to start. And it's got a uh, old school TV. Is that, um, is that your TV, the graphic artist's TV? Oh, it's just one or I a found. TV I, off the internet? I actually did all that. But, yeah, that's just a TV I found. Oh, excellent. Yeah. And that's my uh, Atari, though. <laughs> oh, yeah. oh, nice. Yeah. Okay. Conceived and designed by Mick Muse. And then there's some old school 70s kids gathered around uh, artwork television on the back there, ready to uh, enjoy Deep Stone Catacomb. Somehow they uh, got that teleported back in time to the 70s, the game. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> or they just enjoy playing it on a, a 4x3 television, which a lot of people do. And the gorgeous manual. Very, very nice. Now, this is not in the style of a classic manual. This is more a modern-looking manual. Um, how much of the artwork uh, did you do in terms of the packaging? Uh, all of it. All of it? Yeah. Oh, wow. This is excellent artwork on the front here. The manual, I tried to keep it kind of classic. Like, I added a lot of the same type of style as the old Atari games on the inside. The cover, definitely not, obviously. It's a full <laughs> graphic, yeah. but yeah. Oh, it's beautiful. Gorgeous. Um, okay, so actually I'll show a couple of the insides of it. Let's find a nice page here. Oh, some of the creatures. Excellent. There's a double spread of some of the creatures that you may encounter in the catacombs. Beautiful. And very, very colorful uh, enemies in this game. Have you played this game before? I think we have, yeah. but I'm, tr I'm, I'm trying to... Very easy to understand and pick up. Mm. So, there we go. So, welcome, Mick. Welcome to the show. Thank you. Awesome <laughs> to be here. Yeah, and congratulations on Deep Stone Catacomb coming out. Thanks. Um, and this is your first uh, Atari 2600 game? That's right. It's, it's my first game ever really i oh wow I've, 
wrote a lot of uh, games for modern PC, Mac, and stuff, but I've never finished anything. I suffer from right. uh, feature creep pretty bad. So yeah, yeah. Came up yeah, with the like, idea like to... is said said before the the the, the last eighty percent, which is actually in the last twenty percent, is the hardest, right? Yes. Yeah. Um, I've always wanted to make an Atari game. I remember being a little kid, asking my brother, um, "How do you make a video game?" Like, and uh, he kind of laughed at me and said, "Oh, you'll never be able to make a video game." <laughs> <laughs> I'll show him. Yeah. I'll show them all. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> And, and so you did this in, like, explain the 30 days thing. Um, yeah. You put a blog, you put a blog up uh, chronologically uh, telling the story of you making the game. Right. Um, I chose 30 days because I was suffering from feature creep on all my other projects so much that nothing was ever getting finished. And uh, I thought, like, this would be a really good break. I'd finally be able to achieve that goal of uh, making an entire game that I wanted to when I was a kid. So uh, I just thought, okay, 30 days, I should be able to learn uh, Atari through uh, Random Terrain's website. And yeah. Uh, yeah, just blogged it every day to make sure. I didn't release the blog while I was doing it. I, cause I didn't right. want to tell anyone because I didn't, I didn't know if I was going to accomplish this or not. And I just kind of... And, and I guess the, there's the pressure as well. It's like, oh, I don't like this. Or you so, should add that as well. Yes, yeah. right. So I just uh, kind of kept to myself, wrote a blog um, entry at the end of each day that I spent. I, I'd spend like 12 hours a day probably on any day I had off um, coding and learning at the same time. And uh, I, I did wonder that whether you uh, documented each day as you did the day or shortly after or you had to you know, go back and you're like, oh, I missed two days of blogging my... No, I, I think I pretty much did it at the end of each one. I wrote a quick, uh, like sometimes I wrote a few little notes or whatever, and then then yeah. flushed it out after. But um, right, right, yeah. Oh, that's that's excellent. And did you do it as like the blogging as you know documenting what you did, or tr so you can remember it, or? maybe slightly as a, a learning tool for other people saying, oh, you could, you can do this too. Yeah. Um, here's, here's how you can, you make a game in, in 30 days of programming. I always love following other developers um, through their blogs. And uh, yeah, I just thought it would be a fun thing to do. It would be a memory sake. I can go back and remember all the mm. little issues I had and stuff like that while I was developing. Yeah. Um, let's see, uh, oh, I asked all my questions without even looking at the paper. Um, now my, my, I think my favorite thing in the whole game is the coin. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it, it's just so beautiful, uh, with its color you, and its animation. You actually called it too. I remember when you, uh, first played it, you said it reminds you of the coin from Mario. Uh, the original, exactly. Yeah, the original Mario Brothers arcade game. That's exactly where I stole that from. <laughs> wow. Okay. Well, you did a great job then yeah. at uh, mirroring the look of it. And also, something of note is the ladder. And I think I was talking about uh, this to VHZC the other day, um, because his his new game had a ladder in it. Uh, yeah. And as soon as you touched the ladder, you went to the other room. Right. And it reminded me of the ladders in your game where you can actually stop going down the ladder right. once you've started going on the ladder. And I thought that was a nice, really nice touch. Yeah. Where it's like, oh, you accidentally touched it, yeah. but, you know, you can still get off it if you want. Yeah, there, there's been many times where that's happened in games for me that you remember, oh, I shouldn't have touched that right then. And it, so, it, yeah, it, it helped me out a lot, like, playing through the game. You touch that ladder Especially and you remember, oh, a, I want to oh. go back to that room. You can jump off at the last second. Yeah, and I think this is a, it's a one-way ladder as well in this game. Yes, right? it is, yeah. yeah. The, so you definitely want to way out if, yeah. if you accidentally go down that ladder because you're in trouble if you haven't, you know, powered up quite enough right. to get to the next level. Um, now, the game is ex extremely well-balanced for difficulty and enjoyment as well. 
Uh, how was, how did your testing process go? Um, because there is no public works in progress. Like, how, how did you know that I this works well? I didn't realize um, you could do beta testing on the Atari H forums, or I probably would have done that. Um, yeah. I just beta tested the hell out of this game myself uh, for yeah. a very long time. Like, more <laughs> more beta testing than there was actually developing the game. Like, I say I made this in 30 days, but I'm not counting the testing that I did and all the bug fixes yeah. and it it was a long process and uh, your show helped a lot too um, a lot of okay the so there were bug fixes I didn't after us playing yeah yeah oh that's excellent um, because it plays really really well and I mean even when we played it on the show and I guess that was that was the the world premiere of it um, yes yeah it, it played beautifully uh, I don't know if we finished it on that day but we finished it uh the first level on another day and i you know i had no problems with the difficulty balancing it That's... it felt like it was dangerous at all times right but also at the same time not unplay not unwinnable like it was right. just like oh my god i'm almost dead uh but i know if i just play a little better i can i can do better yeah i was i was trying to make it so all play like skill level players could get something out of it at least like not feel like they're gonna die right away when they jump in or like you you can get per, like even a beginner can get somewhere in this game um but it is it it ramps up and the game is so long i, I wanted to, yes. it, to make a game that you actually had to sit with on the atari like you had to there's a lot of place to explore and it's a uh, it's a pretty big dungeon yes yeah, it's not linear, so there's a, some backtracking. Um, there is upgrades that you get along the way. Right. Uh, health, but you you keep rooms clear, which yeah, yeah. is somewhat unusual for most games on the 2600, because you have to keep track of that. You have to go: is that room clear? Is it not clear? And that's thanks to uh, DCP um, Plus, probably uh, having all that space. <laughs> To be able all to, that extra room. Yes, because you, you have to. The Atari has to remember that each each room is cleared. So, um, yeah. Yeah. And also, one thing of note is that when you go into the room, it is random what's in the room. So you can back out of the room and go back in, but mm -hmm. not always. Sometimes you get punished yes. for trying to do that and clear out the room of. Oh, I just want the easy monsters. It's like, well, now you're stuck in the room. You did yeah. that too many times. Yeah. You're gonna have to fight what we give you, <laughs> yeah. which is a great add-on because some games you can just, you know, cheese the game, go back and forth, right. and go. Okay, I just want to get the get the easy monsters. Yeah. 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 Um, um, yeah. One of the so people things I go ahead. Sorry. Sorry, I was gonna say go go ahead. Oh, I was just gonna talk about one of the biggest issues I had in the game, uh, bug-wise. Um, which yeah. I solved, but it, it was, uh, I think it was before I made the doors close. And I remember there was, you could, there, every floor there'd be a door and you could walk through that door and you'd end up in a room with no exits. And I didn't even make the oh. door close at that point in time. Oh. And uh, that was the biggest bug. I think I spent like three days trying to figure out what was going on there. It was, uh, oh wow. It was unwinnable rooms. It was really silly though. All the pro I was looking for a problem, but the problem wasn't in the code. It was something I forgot to add into the code. It was oh. I didn't add enough hallways. Like I thought I, I I planned it all out on paper, all the different hallways and rooms and how they're gonna connect. And uh, so there actually wasn't anywhere to go. There was nowhere. Yes, yeah, there was nowhere for it to go. <laughs> so the Atari just made an empty room uh, with no. Uh, doorways so when i was looking for a problem mm. i couldn't find it it was just missing the actual rooms uh, oh wow that 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 would be a very difficult bug to try yeah, that, down. yeah it felt good <laughs> finding that one that, that was that was probably uh, the biggest issue i had making this game but other than that it yeah. pretty much it went pretty smoothly i think but. oh that's good and everybody can read um uh, along with the development um what where is your well maybe you can type it in the chat later uh, where they can uh, read through their blog of development blog. Uh, mcmuse.com. Oh, that's easy. Yeah. Don't even need to type it. 
M I C K M U S E. Uh, no, uh, it's no. M I C K M U Z E. dot com. Z E. Yes. 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 Um, it should have sent it in uh, Canadian <laughs> instead of American. <laughs> uh, I... Um. Go ahead. Oh, I'm Canadian. Yeah. <laughs> oh, there we go. See, wrong on both accounts. Yeah. Um, somebody asked if that's a one five four one in the background. I can verify it is. Your uh, Commodore. Uh, oh driver. yes, yeah, I have a. Oh, there's actually a keyboard as well. Yeah, Commodore. Yeah. <laughs> that's your daily driver computer. Yeah. <laughs> Very nice. Yeah, I think uh, Atari bought Commodore. I think Jack Tramil. Jack Tramil bought. Yes. Yeah. That is correct. So it's it's related. Or it's, it's all good. The Jack Tramil bought Atari. That's what. Uh, oh, I can't remember. I'm terrible with that. Um, somebody said, I love the Legend of Zelda dungeon kind of look. Was that an inspiration or were... Definitely a huge Zelda fan. Um, and I, I just love fantasy and role-playing games. I was always trying to make RPGs. Um, I'd consider this more of an adventure game than an RPG, though. But, yeah. Yeah, very, very light RPG elements. Because there are things you can collect there's upgrades there's right. uh, the sword that you can shoot with there's health to get um but but soup super light and i i it it's it's a fun you know action kind of game yeah and with a little bit of rpg elements yeah just trying to add a little bit of everything that i kind of grew up with um atari was my first system it was a hand-me-down uh yep. atari was a little bit before my time but um I, it was my first system I ever played, though. and Oh, wow. Yeah, and um, so I took a lot of things from Nintendo, too, like Castlevania, like uh, with the chicken for health. Thing and, <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah, you've got a little chicken leg in here for uh, for health in this. Yeah. Yeah. It's not it's not in the wall, so it's, uh, yeah, it's, that's, it's out in the open. Yeah. You don't have to smash a wall to get the chicken. <laughs> no. <laughs> And uh, somebody asked, what's your cat's name? Of course, it's Jamtex. Oh, uh, Ask there's that. two. I'm not sure which one was here. I can't remember, but uh, Nova and Cleo. Oh, there we go. Very nice. We've got two cats as well. Yeah. <laughs> Atari and Pixel. <laughs> yeah. Actually, my first cat was Cleo. Oh, yeah. there you go. It was when I was about, yeah, very, very young. <laughs> oh, yeah. Gray, fluffy, half Persian, poof ball of a cat. So, yeah. <laughs> Um, so, uh, I'm really looking forward to playing level two on the show soon. <laughs> oh, awesome. Yeah. I'd love to see it. Cause, uh, yeah, I've been highly anticipating this game. So, um, so we'll be doing that fairly soon, possibly even the next show. Oh, great. So I'm, I'm very excited for that. Maybe Tuesday. I might be too exhausted to do Tuesday. Yeah. We'll we might see. cancel it. It's a long one. <laughs> yeah, it is a long one today, yeah. but so far so good. Um, so Anything you would like uh, to add or people to thank before we let you go um, uh, that were involved in getting this out? I'd uh, like to thank Al and uh, you guys, mostly. Um, yeah, um, I, I thanked a bunch of people on the back of the manual there that uh, um, if I yep. read something on the forums that helped me out at all, I kind of made a note and thanked them because I didn't really have conversations yeah. with people i didn't know anybody when i first started this and uh and and you did everything in this like you did the manual too all the artwork all the game right. the sound the graphics right and I, I i didn't really announce it or show anyone except for al until i was pretty much 100 percent done yeah yeah that's right yeah you say albert yaruso fred quimby random terrain ice posta Rena foot mbo carl g and us oh and erlen and darcy's on here well that that's great thank you very much so great uh great work especially for it being your first game it's it's super super fun thanks and i definitely recommend everybody checking it out got my second one on the go now too Oh, yeah. yes. Excellent. Looking forward to that. Yeah. What What is your development going to be like for this? Are you going to do some works in progress? Or are you going to just um, release it like you did this one? I'll probably release it like a this demo. one. I'll probably wait till I, I am keeping a little bit of uh, notes on uh, the development. Um, but I'll, I'll probably just wait till it's finished and then let you yeah. all see it, I it guess. Wor <laughs> it worked this time. It's going to 
keep the track keep yeah. going on with how you did it this time yeah it did, yeah zero pressure that way and this uh, that's true yeah well thank you so much uh for being a part of atari age day yeah. and for this uh great fun game so what did you think fun. of it yeah, good and i guys. didn't hit kill the boss at the end so <laughs> you didn't kill the boss no no oh. i died just before but that's okay but the, you made it to the boss the dragon looks beautiful as well so yeah. so the colorful dragon and and at the end of of that level so yeah. thank you. anyway yeah. yes excellent lots of so. fun really 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 fun to play yeah. really enjoying it so great so, thank you thanks so much mick and uh we'll see you online all right see you later okay bye-bye Bye. Excellent. Oh, so much a lot fun. of fun. So much fun. <laughs> Mick there. Right. And uh, so Al has come up with, is it, uh, have we done the two o'clock? Oh, we have. So it's not quite three yet. But Al has come up with another uh, question okay. for people. Excellent. So we'll be doing he's, that at he's three. He's given you a trivia question then? Yes. So and we're the answer, be... right? Uh, uh, no, but he's in the chat. Yeah, but. So he'll let, he'll say blog auditors. Okay. I'm sure. All right. Yeah. Um, so we're going to move on to Pit Cat, um, made by Marco Johannes, uh, Marco J, and Dyfed Hitchings, who is Jam Tex. Um, and then we'll be going to, on to John Champo with Avalanche and Zookeeper. Oh, love it. Yep. Um, so uh, Pit Cat, um, oh, do I have this correct? Um, You're doubting your notes? Yes. Uh, it was nominated for Best Homebrew Port, Best Graphics Port, and Best Music and Sound Port, if I'm not incorrect about that. So let's get them on the line. Mm. Uh, they are through Zoom. <clears throat> so let's, let's see if I can do this correctly, because there are two of them. Trying to get both of them. Yeah. Oh, I know how to do it. Yeah, I should be able to do that. Okay. <laughs> <clears throat> Shall I open the box in the meantime while you're figuring it out? Let's start the video. Select another video camera. Oh, probably because something else is <clears throat> running. Uh. Oh, that's right. That one is using the camera. Oh, I see. Yeah. Yeah. One second, peoples. It's a coming. It's Can coming. look at the beautiful box art. There we go. Let's invite some more people. Invite. There we go. Now they've been invited. Should work. Hopefully they can hear and see us. Okay, so here is the box art. Yes. Very classic styling. Very nice. Uh, I was just old school Atari. Oh, reading the narrative. Two children get lost in the forest on their way to a nice picnic. They get cursed by an angry demon and turned into cats. <laughs> Can you help them through over a hundred rounds of challenging puzzles to break the curse? Awesome. And we've almost got Marco on the line here. Excellent, excellent. One second. Yes, this is going to be... Oh, here we go. Hello, Marco. Can you hear us? Can we hear you? Let's make sure... Oh, yeah, you should you be able to, to hear you us. Have to, you have to say... Oh, I can hear him. Hello, Hello. Marco. I'm not sure if I can are you, hear you. Are you muted? Oh, you can't hear us yet? No, you, you, you usually have to. Uh, no, it's registering. Mute, unmute. It's saying that we're working. Our microphone is working. Yeah. Check, check, check. Can you hear us, Marco? Check, check, check. Ah, One, two, three. Yeah. There we go. So Excellent. I had some audio settings wrong on my end. Oh, no problem. So we are uh, hopefully having a DiFed joining us as well. Yes. I suppose that. Yes. Or we could yep. do him separate. <laughs> yep. Yep, we could. Yeah. Um, so Pit Cat. Um, incredible. Fun game. We've played it on the show. Mm -hmm. You've played it. Oh, um, yes, yes. Lots yes, of fun. Yes. Congratulations on the release of it. Now, uh, this is an unusual release, the way uh, it's happening. Um, now, maybe you can explain how this game is going to be released. 
Um, that's probably more of a question for David. Um, I could probably, okay. if that's okay. Yeah, we can let him answer that. Um, one second. So we're going to show the uh, box on the screen so everybody can see it, including you. Where is my mouse? So go oh. to the participants. Is, is, oh, it's just two. I've invited him. Oh, okay. It'll, it'll flash up if okay, he comes good. in. So let's take a look at the pit cap box. I'll move the mouse out of the way. Oh. Oh, no. He wants me to go into a new chat, which is not happening, because <laughs> then we'll leave you. Uh, let's try and invite him again. And see if he can come in. Because that'll be much easier to get both of you on the line. So here is the cart, here's the box for PitCat. A uh, very classic Atari looking box, orange ca uh, cover. And um, so who did the uh, artwork on the front of the box? Uh, that's by David. He did all the manual and the artwork for the, for the box. Um, he produced it. It was actually another um, artist called uh, Sharamel Desser who did the actual um, ma manga style artwork. So David sort of put it all together and authored the manual. Nice. Oh, excellent. So I think we've got him on the line. Yay! Excellent. Hey. Welcome. <laughs> <laughs> so we've got both of you. It's going to be auto switching. I wonder if we can just you should change be able that. To, um... So we can get you both on the screen at the same time. <laughs> there we go. But I don't want to see me. <laughs> oh, no, I can't do that. Oh, we're going to have to see me. That's all right. There we go. I'm at the bottom. That's better. <laughs> okay. Yeah, it looks fine. It's a bit weird, but we'll deal with it. Yeah. <laughs> so welcome to both of you. Maybe let's start off now that we've got both of you. What are each of your uh, contributions uh, to this release? I'll start with Dyfed. Um, I basically did the uh, manual design, the box design. I done all the. I did a lot of play testing in the um, game. Um, I gave suggestions to Marco about how the game could be improved. Um, and yeah, just try to get him to finish the game off. <laughs> That's true. And, and Marco, so you're the uh, programmer for the game? That's correct. I did the programming okay. and uh, rearranging music and graphics. And uh, that, that's my contribution. Excellent. And this is your first 2600 game? That's correct. I mean, it is astounding, the polish that this game has. Uh, it, it is absolutely amazing uh, mm -hmm. how intricate and uh, how, how clean and how many flourishes it has to the game including like the, the title screens, the menus, how things fly off the screen, how, thing, how the um, level select moves up and down. It's, it's absolutely amazing for thank you so much. first time out. Thank you. Yeah. And I have David to thank for putting all those suggestions in and keeping the feedback coming. That really, really helped the process. Oh, yeah. Um, so tell us a bit about the history of this game because this is a port that's correct uh, from another system that's correct um i grew up with this game uh back in the early 90s i really loved it i had it on the game boy in fact here it is ah, there we go now that one's called pit man that's and, correct uh, so it tell was... us about your obsession with cats <laughs> <laughs> i guess that that comes from the game but it was originally uh, created by um, Yutaka Isakoa. Um, he created this game for, for an early computer that M said, and then it was ported for the Game Boy. The Game Boy is the one, the version I'm familiar with. And um, I remember just playing this game for hours and hours, and just the, the amount of thought you have to put into finishing some of those levels and planning um, and trial and error uh, really makes it for me. Oh yeah, like it starts off relatively, like really simple actually. Actually the first level is 
you have no choice but to win. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so that's it's got a great uh, a great learning curve. Um, now the level design uh, are these levels that were originally in the original game, or is it a mix between new ones and old ones, or are they all new? Uh, they're all the original. So when I first set about making this, I wanted it to be as faithful to the original as possible. Um, it's criminally underrated. I wanted it to be seen yeah. and appreciated by another generation, perhaps maybe the older generation that were before Game Boy. So I, that was the idea. And uh, the music is also really good for the 2600. It's catchy, it's bouncy, and it's really, really fun. Um, was this uh, also from the original game? That's correct. Um, it was originally made by Masao Asakawa for the Game Boy version. And... Um, I just uh, rearranged the original to suit the Atari, and it was almost exactly perfect. Of course, needed the essential tier tracker software to do that. Um, that is so essential in the process. It's like uh, trying to produce music with, without a piano. Like if you had a rock and banged it together, uh, unless you have tier tracker, <laughs> tier tracker is like a piano. It's, just, it's very difficult to make good music without software such as tier tracker, and that's what I use. Very good, the author. Very good. Yeah, it's it's really really good music, and um, I mean adapting music to the twenty six hundred is is very challenging because of the way the the notes are structured, and uh, you were able to make it into a very very nice tune that doesn't sound atonal, <laughs> which can happen quite a bit on the twenty six hundred where it's like ah these notes <laughs> my ears they bleed. Yeah, that's that's <laughs> true, and I think the more notes and having both channels running at the same time and having flurries of notes, you, the off notes kind of aren't as, as noticeable uh, for such oh, okay. fast tunes like this. I think um, it, it's okay. But if you have long drawn out notes, yeah, it, you can tell if it's off key sometimes, but it seems to be okay. I, I didn't know how it's going to turn out and I'm very impressed. So you said Dyfed uh, uh, encouraged you to add all these uh, incredible flourishes to the game, like the menu scrolling and all of that. Uh, so, um, Dyfed, where how, where did you come up with all of these these different things to to add to the game that really really make it? Well, a lot of the uh, stuff that that was uh, shown, like the menus, are actually in the Game Boy game anyway. So it's like trying okay. to make it as accurate as possible to the original Game Boy game. Um, but there are other things we added to it, like just adding a simple mirror mode to make the levels look different to the Game Boy version, um, uh, as well as having as well as having like things like a speed run mode. Um, so it was just a case of like trying to use the space we had left on the game to add some extra things that the uh, Game Boy game didn't have. Mm, yeah, yeah. Um, oh, what was it? Oh, now. Now this this homebrew is, is really pushing the limits of the 2600, and I can attest to that because uh, when we tried to play it on on the show, <laughs> my my console freaked out. It, it went nuts, and it was like, ah, oh, there's too much happening on the show on the on the on the game, and, um, and and it was a combination of of my system being modded and and a bunch of other things. So you had to to work through those. Um, those timing issues like you were really literally racing the, the beam because this is a very very um uh detailed game um so what were some of the challenges um in making this game i think the big challenge was the the password mode the password system was actually adapted from the original game boy version by uh, decompiling the um assembled rom and then adapting it from the Z80 code into 6502 and uh, did this line by line and um, took quite a long time. In fact, it halted the project for around eight or nine months. So wow. when we got up to the password code, uh, that, that took a lot of time to do. Um, the other difficult thing I would say is trying to eliminate the screen roll that was in the first revision that was released. Um, during the actual gameplay, it, it's stable, but between screens it would flicker and the screen would roll. So 
I know uh, David really kicked my butt to try get that into the game and make it uh, complete. And um, it actually halted progress of another game we're working on. He put his foot down. So, yeah, thank you, David. <laughs> yeah, and you mentioned the passwords. You mentioned the password scheme. Now you, I, I believe you can take the passwords from the Game Boy game and use them in here and vice versa. And, and it, that's why you wanted to put the password system in there and took so much time to do that, right? Exactly. Wanted to make it so you could be playing the game on the Atari version and then move to the Game Boy, put the password in that, get a password in that, put it back in the Atari version. You could make it for the road and then come back and play it on the Atari again. So, yeah, yeah, that, that was the yeah, thought behind that. Yeah, one, one of the other things about the password system is the um, the Atari version still has all the bugs of the Game Boy version, so you can actually <laughs> type in random codes and actually get the same oh. levels as you would on the Game Boy version. Oh, it's wow. really yeah, super we, accurate. <laughs> we found that out by accident, actually, while we were testing it. Um, I, I remember going through on Stellar in debugger mode and then going through uh, BGB, which is the Game Boy emulator, um, in its debugger mode and going line by line for a given password and, and testing it and um wow that that took a lot of time but wow i'm so glad i did it now wow so this i don't even know what you'd call this game at that point when when you're like just converting actual code to another system it's 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 more than a port it's like a, it's like a conversion it's a it's the exact duplicate almost of the game yeah and um, yeah. for that particular it component, it's, um, it's very low level. It's doing like bit shifting and um, a lot of branching right. and it, it, it's very precise and you get one shift wrong in the password way out. So yeah, <laughs> it's very precision. Uh, and now you've made even last minute updates to this game. Um, the, the, um, the tiles are now slammed together they used to have a tiny little uh line in between them and that uh that's very very recent yeah so maybe you could talk about that okay so the original um idea for the for the game engine was from the video chat which has that that little gap in it as well and um that was the original kernel that that was used for the game um i wanted to remove that gap later on and i found a couple of people who'd done some work with uh, you, you clear the horizontal motion registers and you can um, store to H move. Sorry, being technical here. And then. Um, That's okay. We've got a lot of developers in the chat <laughs> and watching, so. And, um, <laughs> they'll, they'll be interested too. It allows you to do a, a plus eight and minus eight horizontal shift so you can get um, you can get the characters one after the other back and forth with the um, Venetian line mode and uh, not have any gaps. So. That particular um, engine, um, using it for a next game we're, we're in development in at the moment, and um, it which it looks really awesome. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the new their new game looks great. You, you'll you'll like it. Um, and people are saying, "I like the gaps. I want the gaps." Yeah. Now, is there <laughs> in 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 the release version uh, that you're? Uh, we'll talk about that in a second. How it's being released. Um, are you giving the option of gap and gapless uh, versions? Uh, um, yeah, basically, if people uh, want to use the original gapless version, they can. If they want to use the gapless version, they can as well. Um, okay. So basically, they can have a choice of it either. <laughs> um, and um, at the very, very top of the interview, uh, you weren't here, Daffod, but I asked Marco how this is a very unique release for Atari Age. I mean, I have a cartridge in my system right now. It says PitCat on it, and it has graphics on it. But this is not really the way it's going to be released. So maybe you can talk a little bit about this unusual situation. Um, because the game is based on another game, and it's literally a sort of one-to-one -one copy, we did want to just sell it as it was. So um, if people want to get the cartridge, then they can do so by just um, using Atari Ages um, uh, game on uh, game um, uh, game service basically, where they can basically right. uh, Al can burn a cartridge with the game on. However, the the box and manual, because they are original and uh, and so forth, people can buy them on top of it 
to um, complete the game if they wish, but the game won't be sold as a game itself. Right. So, so they just have we, we, to we, do a couple more steps to get the full game, but it's it's being provided for separately. Yeah, yeah basically, um, Atari Age. Um, well, uh, because it's a game that we, uh, it's free. Um, if you want to um, play it, you download it from the Atari Age website. Um, ah. Yes, and um, if you people want it on cartridge, they basically can get it burnt to a, a cartridge um, separately. Um, but if they want to make it complete, they can buy the game, the box, and the uh, <laughs> manual. Right. So people can download it right now and and play the game if they if they want to it and uh, want to, and then yep. they have the option of getting the cartridge. Um, oh, Vitoko says, hold the button and move the joystick mm, to pan the screen. Yes, yes, yes. I um, and, and <laughs> People are, people are, uh, Cobra, you fool, says the undo is messing with my mind. How? That's plain amazing. <laughs> so that's, that's a lot of information to store in terms of the undos. Like, are you, how are you storing all this information of where things are and where they're, they've been moved, etc., etc.? Okay, so that's um, all done in RAM. So... The E7 banking scheme has lots of nice RAM for doing this kind of thing. Um, most games use a ROM kernel and maybe use an indirect uh, lookup through RAM. Um, in this case, it's all running in RAM and addresses and colors are shifted directly into the memory and it just reads the code and writes to the screen. Mm. So there's another Excellent. section of RAM which has all like what the level is like in terms of what bricks are where, like a tile map and um, okay. every few frames it gets transferred into the special video RAM that draws the screen. Okay, yeah. Um, I think that is all my questions. Um, is there anything you'd like to add or people to thank or something uh, else you'd like to say about the game before we let you go? Okay, um, I'd like to Thank uh, you, James and Tanya, for showing it on your show and being supportive of it. And uh, for the okay. Atari Age members that have played it and uh, provided feedback for it and um, in enjoyed the the game. So, um, thanks, Alfred. Yeah, um, yeah, basically, I'd like to um, thank the wonderful artists who drew the fantastic um, artwork for the game. And if you look through the manual, there's a, a number of other bits of artwork and sketches um, which are exclusive to the um, printed manual as well. Oh, yeah. Oh, I like that. Mirrored mode is mirrored. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> and, and I think Al said this is, this is one of the heftier um, manuals that uh, he made this time around. And it's got, uh, you know, drawings of cat girl and cat boy. It's, it's really <laughs> quite, quite a nice, uh, nice manual, actually. I'm going to switch over to the the, the uh, close-up camera here and show that page. There's Catboy and Cat Girl. Yeah, the manual is something really, really nice. Um, people are asking how to get it on the Atari Age. Oh, so I don't have it set up just yet. I will do so all these once these new games are shipped. So this isn't quite ready yet in the Atari Age store, but it will be very soon. So I'll just... I'll just let us know like about you. that. So, but you can play the game right now, today, no problem. So, if you like the game, definitely give it a download. It is a lot of fun. Oh, so good! If you like puzzle games, Tons you'll love. Yeah. yeah. How many? How many levels are there actually? Uh, there's 99 base levels, and once you finish the 99 levels, there's um, actually some other levels, which is secret. You have to make it there yourself. Ah, wow. so tons of levels for yeah. people to play. More <laughs> yes. than enough. And the, the later levels get really hard. Yeah. You'll be That's hitting that select button. <laughs> <laughs> That's so why there's 100 though. plus levels on the front. <laughs> 100 plus levels, yes. Wow. Yeah, you have to find them. So I've, so not actually, I've not actually completed all the levels. I've got up to level 88 by myself. I know David has. He tested the, the heck out of it. But um, I'm yep. still trying to get through it myself. <laughs> So S. Ramirez says, I will not buy it, but I'll buy it too. <laughs> <laughs> so, you can, so you can do both. Yeah. <laughs> so thank you so much for joining us today and uh, making this new amazing game. <laughs> <laughs> ah, ah, ah. Pulled out my... Yeah. 
Cat like, there's a cat theme. I'm there's gonna jump theme. in the middle of the it's gonna attack me. Yeah. <laughs> um, so thanks for joining us and both of you for being on the chat today. And Thank you very much. much. Excellent, excellent game. Talk Thank to you, you soon. Bye. 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 Excellent. Awesome. And uh, we had played this game mm -hmm. quite a bit on the show. Oh yeah. And uh, it it's astounding the tech behind it, and it's really great to talk to the developers yeah i don't think we've ever talked talk to either of them before so. no and somebody was saying that in the chat it was like oh this is really great like, yeah <laughs> seeing the faces behind the developers yes and you Be see the names behind the you, names yeah because yeah. yeah. you just read in the in the forums or they pop like, up oh, in the chat know. on the show and you see names yeah. and you're like hmm. Wonder what, you know, you never wonder see how, what they look like. How, or... how they are, like, you know, yeah. what they look like, it's how they talk, cool. yeah. where they're from, et cetera, et cetera. Yes, yes. Yeah. Um, yeah, unique look for a 2600 game. It is, yeah. Make sure your cats don't push boulders into pits and clobber mummies. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of forethought you have to do to before, uh, you know, moving things around in yes. this game. Yeah. yeah, or you do it and you go... Oh, I just should have done X instead of Y, and then you have to go back, 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 back. That's why there's rewind. Backtrack yourself. Yeah. Yeah. But that's what makes it fun. Uh, oh, it's three, uh, three twelve. Excellent. It is time to give away more money. Money. Well, gift certificates, <laughs> no money. Um, but it's as good as money in the Atari age. So. That's right. Uh, before we bring on John Shampo, and uh, so Al has the question this time. Yes. Um, so, are you ready, everyone? Oh, there's the download link. There you go. You can Wonderful. go download it. Oh, and I see John in the chat, so he's uh, he's around and available. Okay, so this question comes from Al, so he will have to verify. Uh, Al, if you could type in the chat to make sure you're still here. He might be uh, having lunch, or <laughs> I want him to Took make sure. Yeah, Took a break. if he's not here, we'll do it maybe while uh, John Champo is yes. uh, on the chat. Oh. Albert has not yet been eaten by cats. <laughs> That's Ooh. good. That's well, good. there's a cat here ready. He to does eat have you. a couple cats. Yeah. You're, yeah. Are you hungry? Oh, are it's not hungry? time yet. He has no. another 45 minutes. Yeah. Oh, that's his... true. That's why he's getting very. Um, but maybe while I'm talking to John. Excited. Yeah. You can. Uh, I'll feed him. Feed him. Oh, oh, you're oh, being so weak. Okay. Yeah. Uh, the question is, if everyone is ready. Um, what was the first homebrew released in the Atari Age store? Now, I don't know if it's worded specifically like that because it says Atari Age store. In the store. Or if it's really... <laughs> oh, boy. Um, or if it's because they released things before a store opened up and those don't count. But okay. you'll have to interpret it because Al has worded it that way. Um, so we've got Thrust, Okie Dokie, Thrust Plus, Climber 5. I'm Halo impressed how fast that answer came out. So was it? <laughs> so somebody guessed it in those things I just read. Was it Thrust? Well, Okie Dokie's a really old one. Yeah, Thrust. But Thomas is not getting over. Yeah, no award for Thomas. Thr thrust cut That's Thrust. Because it's too easy for him uh, to guess, and he really <laughs> shouldn't have guessed. Well, who, who, who was second in it line was there? Splendid, splendid Nut. Splendid Nut, okay. Yes. I'm fine. I just want to win. <laughs> <laughs> he could have been leading people astray. Yes, well. that's true. That yeah. is very true. Yeah. Well, I think he Splendid Nut Splendid Nut gets it then. Where's my pen? Your pen. Oh, ah. lost my pen, cat. Is that what made the noise? Did it fall down. Probably. Oh, and he's probably batted it away. Yeah, okay, I need it's a under pen. a table now. I've got a cat on my lap. <laughs> um, oh, it's got. Yeah. It's probably in your chair. Oh, maybe. Is it? Oh, yep, good. There it's go. not a cat. See? It's easy to blame the cats. Yeah. Because they, they do get the blame. Usually, if something is broken, chewed through, missing, under the oven, it's a cat. You know, the cat usually did it. But... I think it's it would be good to say somebody yes. can't win twice. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's a fair, a fair, no it's... double, no doubling up. Yeah. Yeah. Um writing down some notes there we go so congratulations splendid nut you have one fifty dollar gift certificate to the atari age store yes 
And we are now um, going to talk with John Champo, and then after John Champo, we'll be uh, reading a uh, text, uh, something that uh, Paul Lay typed out about oh, nice. Scramble XE. Oh, nice, Because nice. he, he was not able to join us oh, today. Oh my gosh, we have a lot of games to play. Oh yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. Um, so we're only yeah. an hour and 15 minutes behind. Oh, so. 15 minutes. Try and catch up. We will. We will. Uh, the one with Scramble is going to be short because he's not. He's okay. not here. We'll give it a quick, quick play. Yeah, then. we'll go right to the gameplay. Okay. And, um, that is very fair. Yeah. yeah. Okay. No. Doesn't mean you should play with it. No. So let's get John on the line with. Right. What am I pulling hangouts. Out here? Uh, well, it's two games. Yes. Um. Make sure we got John in there. There we go. Get him up on the screen. Or get it calling him anyway. There we go. Oh, 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 oh no, 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 no. Yeah, that's why that. I don't have him on my lap. None he's of that. All about chewing the cords. Destroying the cords. Yep. Oh, I see a John. That's, that's a, good a good sign. Thing. He has a lot of headroom. Bring down the camera, John. <laughs> you're like, uh, like uh, mother-in-laws and father-in-laws when they're on <laughs> Skype. It's like they're just creeping up over the camera edge. <laughs> a little bit more. A little bit more. A little bit more. A little bit more. Let's get you on. There we go. Is that better? Uh, oh, tilt no, it down just a little bit more. Sorry, I'm a. Uh... On my uh, laptop here in uh, South Carolina, <laughs> in a on a ho in a hotel, so I'm. Uh, oh uh, boy! Wow. <laughs> so, is that why the picture's crooked, or maybe it's the warp of the camera? Yeah, maybe. <laughs> it's, uh, is that better? That's much yeah. better. I'll try to Perfect. Touch anything, so. Excellent. <laughs> yeah, I'm down here visiting my daughter Elizabeth. You can come over and say hi. Oh, <laughs> oh nice! Extra yep. bonus guest. Yep. She could put so, a waiver hand in front. Yeah. That's good. <laughs> Oh, there we go. Hey. Hello. I think they can see yourself. Oh, hi. Yep. That's it. Wave so. to all your adoring oh, family. Yeah. It's <laughs> anyway, so. Welcome to the show, John. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, and you've got two releases. Yes, always always a couple. Oh, well, yeah, exactly. So. <laughs> yes. Um, it's Avalanche and Zookeeper, which couldn't be further apart from each other in terms of uh, technical kind of things like uh, Avalanche is a 4K game yep. uh, that uses a paddle. Yep. And uh, Zookeeper is a, I'm guessing, 32K yes. uh, game because most of them are using the arm. Uh, using, yep. using the arm chip. So we're running the gamut here of of Atari 2600 games in these releases. Yep. So let's take a look at Avalanche here. Just a gorgeous, gorgeous cover. Uh, which is done by, if you could fill in the blank there, because it's not on the back. Mm -hmm. Who uh, did the cover for Avalanche? Oh, that was David Exton. He did, did a great David job. David Exton. Yeah, he's also so, doing the artwork for Robot War as well, which is looks amazing, by the way. So, uh, But anyway, I don't want to cross-promote yeah. here. So. <laughs> yeah, very, very nice. Yeah, like kind of uh, realistic uh, artwork. Yeah, I think it, and, he was shooting for like the 70s vibe... Um, that's right. The Avalanche, if people don't know, was uh, an old Atari game from the 70s. Uh, that was also an the, yeah, game. the inspiration for Kaboom. So uh, anyway, that's the vibe yeah. he was going for. I think I think he captured it wonderfully. So um, Yeah, this guy uh, that's on the radio is in big, big trouble. Yeah. And so is his truck. It's, uh, yeah. it's in very big danger. And I don't know if that helicopter is going to make it in time. To get him out, but you know. No, yeah, we'll have to see that. We'll for, see. Yeah, maybe I should make an avalanche too. You know, with an actual truck <laughs> and a helicopter and falling boulders, it could be pretty exciting. Who knows? <laughs> <laughs> um, so let's open it up and take a look inside. Yeah, it looks great. It's the first time I'm seeing it too, at least in, in the uh, oh, in, in the flesh, I should say. So. In the flesh. Yeah. Yeah, I, yeah that's kind of uh, an interesting uh, thing. I think I mentioned it earlier in the broadcast that you guys are like looking at the. Looking at the screen because it's the first time you guys have seen yeah, it. Yeah, it looks amazing. It does. Um, so the cartridge, oh, a little bit too close. Uh, also has the uh, oh, there we go. Has the cover art as well with the guy in very grave danger. Is there any and, other kind? 
So. No, really, it's all it's all grave, mild danger, uh, light danger. Light danger. Exactly. Uh, as avalanche on there. Let's take a look at the cover or the uh, manual, yep. which is uh, is a wraparound. Oh, you get to see the extended. Uh, oh, nice. Oh, he's on a road. I thought he was on a cliffside. Uh, no, he, he's well, this. Yeah, he's on the road stopping the avalanche from destroying the town. That's the uh, story we came up with. So. Nice. Oh, okay. Ah. So. so there's the whole thing, and there's the Atari Age boulder. Yep. Um, <laughs> narrowly missing and destroying his truck. <laughs> uh, very, very nice. Oh, but unfortunately, it destroyed the 2600 on the inside cover. Yep. <laughs> But uh, uh, it might it might still work. Atari Twenty Six Hundreds are pretty pretty hearty. I've seen, you know, stories online of people digging them out of dirt, <laughs> brushing them off, and plugging them in, and they work. Yep, exactly. I'm, I don't know if that one's gonna work, but it'd, it'd, it'd be worth <laughs> a try. Fairly crushed. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, maybe, and, we, uh, we should probably have a giveaway. Maybe give away a, a crushed uh, Atari uh, Twenty Six Hundred <laughs> for the first ten buyers. <laughs> yeah that's right we'll, we'll crush it on camera and then give it away yeah, exactly just to make people mad Gallagher style <laughs> exactly you know the guy that smashes watermelons Gallagher what's his name oh <laughs> yes exactly <that's> right. <laughs> there's a callback that uh, definitely fits in this demographic yeah <laughs> <laughs> um, so let's get out the other game and take a look at the cover of that one as well okay. excellent um, and we'll probably well let's Play. Yeah, this is a paddle game, right? Average? Yeah, so yes. we're going to play that second because we already have the joysticks plugged okay, in right fair now. Enough. Hand over Zookeeper, please. And there we can pack you go. That get away. And there is Zookeeper. Let me switch over. People can see it other than me. Very uh, nice. Very cover. dynamic cover as well uh, yeah. with the Zookeeper. Uh, oh, that's excellent, yeah trying to contain the snake when he's about to be run over by much, much bigger animals. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's a problem. Yeah. And uh, if only you got this much help in the game uh, yeah, from yeah. the uh, other person, I don't know her name, but she is uh, seemingly able to hold her own with the monkeys, but not in the game. She, she just, That's Zelda. And she's uh, modeled, Zelda. modeled after Tanya. <laughs> oh, there we go. Oh, there you go. Red hair. Yeah. yeah. Do you have a blue dress? Uh, I can find one. <laughs> I think you had one. Yeah. Um, very, very good. Who did uh, this cover? Um, this new guy, Nathan Strim. Nathan Strim? Yeah, he's, he, he, yeah. yeah, he's a new guy. Um, yeah, he, he's for his first game, he, he did, did an amazing job, so. <laughs> great job on his uh first cover art uh, and he should stick around and do some more uh, absolutely this is astounding. yeah i think i'm gonna have yeah. him do a gore arcade as well since he did so well oh, in Zookeeper, good, so. Good. <laughs> <laughs> so let's open this up and take a look at the cartridge and the manual oh, beautiful beautiful cartridge there oh, yeah. uh, replicating the cover art that's pretty standard uh, to, yeah. to do the same artwork. It's a lot of work to do this art, so I can understand why they would not uh, change it. Yeah. Um, this one came out yeah. great, so I really like this one. It looks really great, really nice. Vivid. Very nice vivid colors. colors. Yep. Yeah. There's the zookeeper on the end. Nice, big font. And the manual. Glossy, glossy manual. Beautiful. Oh, and it combines the two action scenes together. Yep, and I think I think you're turning around the. Uh, no, maybe not. There was like a hole. <laughs> there's like a hole out in the back that was matched up, or maybe oh, it's in the front. Yes. Maybe in the front of the cover, or inside of the front. Yeah, of that. it's inside the front. It shows the yeah, other side. That would make more sense. Of, yeah, of the broken. Exactly, tree. and there's Marcel the monkey. He's the mischievous Marcel. monkey. Yes. Yeah, who's about to break out as well. Yeah, he's always <laughs> up to something. So. <laughs> oh, well, that's great. Yeah. Wow. I'll quickly flip through the manual here. Lots and lots of pages of explanation about points and scoring yeah, the, and the different rounds. Yeah, the scoring for um, Zookeeper cool. is very, very common. There's like three pages just for scoring. It's very, very complicated. But it's not complicated, but there's just so many different ways to get points in this game. It's, it's one that you can get millions of points 
Um, so it's, it's yeah, it's, on it's one jump, you can get millions and millions. Yeah. So it depends what level, yeah. what things you're jumping over, how many things you're jumping over. Yeah, if you jump yeah. Uh, 16, you get um, 30 million points if you can jump all 16 animals. So Woof. I think oh, God. I think Nathan has a record. I think you get like a million for jumping 11 or something like that. So it's, uh, wow, yeah, yeah. That, it, it is tough jumping over that many. Yeah. It's very, very difficult. <laughs> <laughs> you have to line them up right and know all the tricks of... Uh, of getting them all going out in the same direction. Yep, it's definitely a, it's a challenging game. Yeah, compared it, to it is very yeah, compared to Avalanche, Avalanche I uh, programmed in a week most of it, and then um, TJ and I spent a month polishing it. This one's um, I started um, on the plane ride back from PRGE 2018. So this is like two and a half years since I started this one. So it's uh, that's uh, definitely a. Um, it's a huge game, and it's and it's it's got a lot of things in it. I mean, it's got the multiple screens. Yeah. Uh, it's got so many different characters, and especially, I, and one of my questions was, how, for people out there who don't know the twenty six hundred, it has two sprites, <laughs> two detailed characters you can draw on the screen on the same horizontal line, and you're looking at this game and going. Well, that's simply not true. <laughs> there are many, many elephants on the same line. Um, so tell us a little bit about all the tricks and uh, just all the tricks that you had to employ to get this, these many enemies and beer steins and your own character on the same line. Yeah, it's... Uh, well, the first thing I did is... Um, um, one concession is that... Um, I have everything flickering at 30 hertz at a minimum. So they're always flickering at 30 hertz. So that gives you four on a line right away without seeing any more perceived flicker. So that was one concession I did. So, uh, but since it's a black background and the uh, um, colors that Nathan chose are you know, contrasted very well, you don't, can't really tell that it's flickering at 30 hertz to begin with. So, so that, that kind of helps. And, you know, Obviously, well, maybe not obviously, this is a um, uh, written using the ARM, the CDFJ, so I have a lot of extra memory, so I'm using my uh, Sprite engine that at this point is, well, five years old. So basically, uh, it's it's been tuned so much that it's able to uh, reposition and reuse Sprites, even in the asymmetrical, uh, um, where, where you have asymmetrical play field. So you don't see any gaps in the play field either. So it's uh, so with that you have mul uh, maximum reuse of uh, of the sprite. So um, obviously it'll still flicker if you have more than four in a, an area because uh, it's not using any uh, multiplexing or I mean sprite copies. I originally wanted to do that, but um, uh, yeah. especially when the animals are running around in a in a circle. You know, if you have like two lions running in the same direction, yeah. I could have done that, and I wanted to. Um, but unfortunately, I did all the eye candy first, and I ran out of space. So. Uh, oh, okay. Um, I was thinking you didn't do that because of for gameplay, they would have to be spaced apart in a very specific. Um, yeah, I was. Uh, uh, distance. Yeah, I was gonna ha have it so it would only do it. You know, um, it was going to be where you wouldn't be able to tell that it was being done on purpose. So as something left, right. you know, I would have it make sure that it was if it was one or two pixels off, I would have it adjust itself while it's going around the corner and stuff like that. So oh, okay. it would have been complicated, but definitely doable. I had it all written down on a cocktail napkin. Then I had, you know, <laughs> then I had a really juicy burger, wiped my mouth, and then that was the end of that. So <laughs> it was gone. Yeah, so. so that that is not part of your your um, engine at the moment. Yeah, no. Duplication? Yeah, no, I, 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 duplication yeah I do use it for other games like Scramble. Um, it's used yeah. heavily in uh, um, some other games, but uh, this one, um, it, it just wasn't, it was going to be too complicated. And this is the only screen that you get any benefit off of it. So um, anyway, so it all that stuff went into other parts of the game that uh, that hopefully people will enjoy, so. Yeah. Now there's a really interesting story behind um, the development of this game. And it came out by, by accident on Mappy. And it has to do with the title screen of Mappy. Yes. Well, this how this whole game could be accomplished. Yes, as far as at least the um, the uh, um, 
vertical lines that are in the bricks. That was just something that uh, when TJ and I were working on the five color Mappy uh, logo, I noticed an artifact when we were drawing half the M on one frame and the uh, other half on another, there was a line that came up and I went, what, what's this? Um, <laughs> and then immediately I thought, I happened to be playing uh, Zookeeper a lot in MAME at the time. I went, oh, I wonder if I could uh, use that to do the bricks. And then it took me about like, a couple hours, but I had the whole, the whole brick pattern done. I went, that actually looks pretty good. Um, so, um, so th yeah. It, is, it a, is it a visual illusion that we're seeing, or how does it actually make that line Yeah, I'm not, overlap? honestly, I don't, someone explained it to me at one point, and I really don't know. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, it would have to be someone like, a, like um, Steven and, and Tom in the emulation, because obviously they've been able to re replicate that in Stella. Um, so, right. so I'm not really sure. I know it has something to do with whatever. I'm, I, it has something to do with <laughs> contrast and you know the alternating yeah. you know it's, it's obviously a perceived thing it's not actually drawing a line it's just because that of that's what i thought I, I it always looks to me like it's a, a trick of your eyes yes like, like it's a exactly it's a, it's a negative space that it's making that both don't quite overlap or something like yes that. it's yeah. it's very strange but um obviously to to well i mean not obviously but to accomplish that you know i have to draw half the um bricks on one frame and half on the other but it's alternating it on every other line so that's why the flicker is really barely n noticeable but if, uh, for people that are sensitive to that if you flip the uh, right difficulty switch you can turn it off completely and the playground and the, not the playground the play field becomes solid completely so um, yeah so it's a good option yeah exactly so it's and it was only like whatever like eight eight bytes to even put that in to, to turn it off it was very easy so um oh this is a very hard level I know. Yeah. jump at you have to hit the, the exact... front, the front edge of the one above it, I believe. Mm. Yeah, which yeah, it, this is just like the arcade, but I always felt this was not fair because this is how you get your. This is the only way to get a bonus of Zeke, and you end up losing half your lives trying to get one free one. <laughs> <laughs> I've complained so about hard. that before on the show. It's the bonus level. Yeah, it's not the bonus level. It's a normal level where you can lose lives. Bonus yeah. levels are like. Hey, you want some some bonus points, some bonus lives here? Yeah. But if you die, it's okay. We'll go on to the next level. Right. No, it's a real level, full fledged. Yeah. I, I, I would say though, know, once you do get the hang of it, it's pretty easy. So once you get the hang of it, you can get fly through this. And unless you like may jump like a little too soon, too late, you should be able to fly through these. Except on advanced, advanced, it's a little bit more challenging. Certainly on novice, it's uh, a little bit easier too because the uh, the collision detection for where it hits the uh, um, cage is a little lower for um novice and a little bit higher for advanced so for oh, people that okay. get frustrated so uh, the moose is a loose the moose is loose <laughs> the moose is loose yeah, oh exactly. they're crazy oh there's an opportunity to jump a whole bunch at once coming yeah so um anyway to, to get um like why I even started this game what's uh you know once i get that brick thing going yeah you know, i reached out to nathan and he uh um volunteered <laughs> uh, to do the, the graphics volunteer. yeah but he's, I, I think yeah. he's actually become a, a big uh, zookeeper fan so uh, um it's uh it, it was great it to is, have him on board so uh, it is so fun and satisfying jumping over like six or seven animals yeah, at once I, it's just so amazing yeah rarely do i play my own games believe it or not because i'm always working on something it seems but this one i'll like i game test it and uh like two hours will just go by. It's, it's like a, it's it's a Zen game in, in my in my eyes, where just jumping over the thing, just and like you know the timing and just getting into that groove. It's just uh, uh, it's you can really lose a couple hours playing this game, in my opinion. So it's, Mike Mike Soul says great little animal sprites. Yeah, it, you know. yeah, that that was uh, uh, making the sprites. That you know the first time we did it, you know the Atari is great for sprites, um, but you know the. Um, the resolution for the horizontal sprites is like twice as less because uh, just the way it is. And also you can only, you know, multicolor sprites vert, um, horizontally. Um, so yes. so we were struggling what to do with um, Zeke when he turned the corner. So as you can see, instead of having him turn vertically and become one blob of a color, I mean, <laughs> I, I, um, we just have him uh, um, just uh, kind of having like a 3D, 3D perspective. And then... Um, for the animals, though, we did actually turn them since they uh, have less colors in them, and I, I think I think Nathan was able to actually capture that pretty well. 
Um, oh yeah. And as far as uh, yeah, as far as the sounds are concerned, I'm, I don't know if people know, but the sounds for Zookeeper yes. are. I was going to ask you about that. The history of the sounds. Yeah. And how they so um, so Atari had planned to do this back in 1983 or four. They announced it in one of the Atari's magazines, and apparently work had been started because there is a videotape out there that shows some of the sprite animation. Um, and also there was a binary that had most of the sounds that were done by Robert Vieira. Um, so we were able to um, um, reach out to, uh, um, I don't know, I'm, dr I'm drawing a blank here, but whoever uh, acquired the, um, he, he's, he's going to kill me too. Um, but <laughs> um, he, he acquired the, the Dutchman 2000. Sorry, that's his uh, username. Um, he acquired the, uh, the, the ROM and he gave me permission to use the, uh, the sounds and Thomas had actually uh, um, reverse engineered the sounds and developed the driver itself because uh, wow. the way things are stored and the way it plays it back is a little uh, little complicated so I was able to use that and then um, the uh, m missing sounds were done by Lee uh, Kevlar Keeps because um, there's a couple of tunes like the lion tune that he did and then even you were involved with some of the sounds. Um, we we're trying to uh, replicate the uh, that much. Yeah, the uh, <laughs> um, the final note on the uh, rescue tune. Um, so, um, so, yeah. so there are some uh, um, tunes that we put in, but most of them are based on Robert's amazing work. Just hearing those sounds come out of the Atari, I think he really captured oh. the. Uh, so it, yeah, it's amazing. Like the, the go to the arcade. Uh, version of this game. Yes. And the sound is so unique. Twangy yeah, and weird exactly. And boing, 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 boing. It's weird, weird, weird stuff. Yeah, so so to be able to capture that uh, and with the TIA just really gives you that zookeeper feeling between Nathan's graphics and that. And then, uh, you know, I, I, I think I was able to, you know, somewhat capture um, the, the, the gameplay pretty well. So between the, those three, you really feel like you're playing zookeeper, you know, at least a, oh, you a do. decent version of it. So. And and just like all your other ports, it, it does like you said, it captures the game so so well. And um, I mean, I haven't played this in the arcade yet, but I'm sure, just like with Galagon, where it may be a better Ga Galaga player mm -hmm. playing the twenty your twenty six hundred port, I'm sure this will make me a better Zookeeper player. <laughs> I think so. Yeah, I've I've gone back to play the main version. Actually, I prefer the twenty six hundred version. It's just something about <laughs> it's just something about the twenty six hundred version. Just popping it in and getting to play right away, and uh, just a unique oh, way that you have zero slowdown. Because you know the the, yes. the yeah the Atari game. You know if you get slowed down in an Atari game, your screen rolls. That's just the way it is. So, uh, but you know, <laughs> that's right. Yeah, in a in an arcade game, for slows down, it actually just slows down. So it's uh, you get no slowdown here. So it's uh, I find it to be is a little it bit actually slow. slow? In the arcade game, because uh, I was yeah. playing it on Mame, uh, yeah. an, on an emulator through PS3 or something, and it was slowing down. I was like, "Yeah, is I'm, it the PS?" I'm not sure. I have actually played it. It's actually at a barcade in Providence, Rhode Island, Zookeeper, and I played it. But yeah. it was so many games. They they had a sit down Spy Hunter, which is like my favorite. Wow, my favorite um, arcade game of all time. So that's a. I ended up spending all my money on that. My me and my son Joey. Um, <laughs> million point yep. joey um <laughs> the expert player yeah exactly so we <laughs> ended up spending more time but i did play a little bit but um yeah so i didn't get to see if there was actually um uh slow down but next time i go there i'll definitely give it a shot so uh, excellent anyway so um so let's move on to kaboom i know you're kaboom having a lot of fun oh <laughs> you're right though i mean yeah it's just uh, just so people know uh, people already uh, some people uh, mistakenly think avalanche is a hat is a uh, hack a kaboom yes. or um but kaboom was actually yeah so i'm not sure how it worked but I, who did kaboom the larry kaplan no i'm not sure who did. that name seems to yeah wh whoever it was but i know they were the atari first and they must have been discussing avalanche at some point um oh yeah yeah, yeah. and while at atari and then you know obviously i, I love kaboom so i, I think a kaboom is actually a, a better avalanche in, in my opinion but I mean, it plays quite differently. It, it, yes. Boom was like it very yes, it, lightly inspired by Apple. Yes, yeah, exactly. So, but it, you can definitely see the uh, um, the uh, inspiration, yeah. like you said. So, uh, so Avalanche, Things yeah, falling. Yep. Yeah, yeah. So Avalanche, I actually did for Kurt Vendel um, back in uh, 2007. Oh. Yeah, um, he was still working with Atari at the time, and they were coming up with like Flashback 42 or whatever it was. Um, and you know, every so often they would ask for, you know, new games. So, um, he said, Oh, why don't you try to make, uh, you know, bring another Atari, uh, game to, uh, 
um, the uh, 2600 to see if we can include on the next uh, next one. So I just went to uh, the killer killer list of video games and right on top, <laughs> yeah. right on top, I said sorted by Atari and I saw Avalanche. I went, what's this? And uh, uh, so it was a paddle yeah. game. So you know, like actually, I had to had it mostly done in a weekend. Um, it was a good challenge for me just because um, um, nope, nope, being able nope, to use nope, the nope, uh, use the uh, paddle. Um, oh, there it is. Okay. Yeah, is that your first paddle game? Yeah, it was. So it was uh, it was good. So and um, be able to do the uh, forty um, rocks across using the play field. Um, yes, which the staggered I, play field. Very very. Yeah, good. I thought that was a unique way to do that. So um, um, so anyway, so that's what happened there. And then um, as with most of my um, Atari uh, projects, um, it got shelved. It's like um, <laughs> Caverns of Mars, and uh, um, now. Yeah. Uh, Lunar Lander and now uh, now uh, Avalanche. So, uh, but we decided, <laughs> you know, too many games. yeah. So after whatever thirteen years, you know, Al and I had been talking about it for like five years. Said, oh, let's just uh, let's put it out at this point. So, uh, let people enjoy. Right. it. So and then, of course, I met with the. Uh, it's only four K, and uh, I met with uh, yeah. Tom uh, Tom Gents, and uh, we were able to. Well, Tom actually made all the space available, and I was able to put in a you know a cool. Uh, um, splash, okay. splash screen. We put in a uh, save key support um, and uh, three uh, um, skill levels and uh, a cool yeah. title screen, and still kept it at 4K. So it was, uh, yeah, that was, it was a good, good challenge. Yeah, it was a little difficult for me going back to just assembly language, but luckily uh, um, <laughs> I was able to, um, you know, flash back a little Jittery? bit. So. Oh, no, you're not showing it. Sorry, let's show the gameplay. There we go. So now we're on Avalanche. Um, let's see. So, Kaboom, like we said, Kaboom was inspired by the arcade game Avalanche, and this is a game. Is this a game that you enjoyed uh, when you're younger? No. And how good are how good are you at paddle games? Actually, that's a I'm, good question. I'm actually decent at Kaboom. Actually, I had a Philly Classic. Are you back in? I don't know when it was. I think one of the last ones they had. Philly Classic was amazing, by the way. Whoever has ever. It was on the East Coast in uh, Philadelphia. Um, it was similar to like a PRGE, but um, yeah. I went down there with um, Pac-Man Plus, Bob DiCrescendo. We actually drove there together, him and I, and, and this guy, nice. Alan Bushman. He's a, a 5200 guy. Um, we, we had a lot of fun. But anyway, uh, Al was there too, I think. Um, but I um, competed in a um, Kaboom contest and came in second to some guy. Wow. You know, this other guy who's like a rain man. You know, he wasn't even looking at the screen and he got like, you know, 10,000. So, <laughs> Um, oh, yeah, he was, he was amazing. And, you know, I was like, well, um, so yeah, no, I've always been a big fan of Kaboom. And so I figured Avalanche would be a, a cool, uh, um, game to do as well. So I find it's yeah. very, very difficult though. So it's, uh, it's, it, oh, it's, this, it's very, uh, when you're at the last row, yeah. it's so hard. Yeah. So and it looks like you have some shaky paddles. At least hopefully that's not my programming, <laughs> but, uh, it could no, be. No, no, it's, it's, they haven't been used in a while. So. Yeah, yeah, that's what happens. Every time yeah. I use the paddles, it's like, oh, they're back to shaking us again. They, <laughs> they get, they, they, they get fine after a while. I probably yeah. need to spray something. In yeah, there. exactly. They're already looking better, but they're always shaky when they first start. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I get the same problem, so. Yeah, I, I'm. We need more paddle I, games. I like to, <laughs> yes, we do. Yeah. It's, it's because it's such a unique uh, interface. Um, very few consoles have a paddle. And um, it's just hard. It's hard to program for paddle, right? Because you have to pull the paddle so much. Yeah. It, every line. Yeah, exactly. Every line. Um, and so you, by doing that, um, and there's no way to. The arm can't even help you with that one. So I can't like, oh, we'll just have the arm go. Um, because it has to be done. Yeah, because the arm can't can't read. Yeah. Like it has no talk. It can't talk to. Exactly. It. So you so you're gonna sacrifice. Um, that's why these most paddle games are simple, at least the kernel part, because. You don't have it uses a good portion of that 76 cycles uh, to even read the paddle, uh, especially yeah. if you're going to read a couple. So, um, but still, obviously, with the arm, you could make a, you know, you could still have these multicolored sprites. You know, maybe a play field in there as well. So, actually, yeah, it's funny. Uh, Nathan and I were just uh, chatting about. He probably thinks I was kidding, but I had like a nightmare <laughs> dream. I don't know if I had some bad fish or something like that. But it was like <laughs> it's a game that's uh, a combination of Kaboom and Zookeeper called Kazoom. 
and uh, <laughs> it's so I, yeah, you could spin around. Yeah, you'd have to use the uh, driving controller yeah. to keep moving. Yeah, um, but actually, well, it'd be similar where you'd have just Zeke on the bottom and Marcel on top dropping um, uh, um, coconuts and coconuts. and you're collecting prizes as coming down. It's uh, I have it all written down oh. on a cocktail napkin, and I'm you know, <laughs> uh -oh. I, it's, uh, it's one of those plastic ca cocktail napkins. So uh, <laughs> so hopefully uh, that's something. Uh, I, I, part of me wants to step back because most of my games, are like besides Avalanche, are you know these epic 32k. Um, actually, my yeah. next game, as you know, is um, well at least you know what size. You know we're moving to a larger size. Um, oh yes, that's right. Yeah. Right. So, um, but it's always nice to dial Very it back game. a little bit. So, uh, um, um, so anyway, so. It's nice to just a come coconut up. Coconut dropping game is in your future. Yeah, then. possibly just just like you know uh, maybe or at least make it like a, it's um, um, like a multiplayer, uh, not multiplayer, but a game that has a cartridge that has multiple multiple games on it, where you have oh, you know what I'm saying yeah. so it's uh, so you have a menu where you can pick multiple, so you can pack in four four K games on one cartridge as opposed to. Uh, yeah. um, well, that would be very very yeah. Cool. So kind of like a party pack yeah. game, or whatever you want to call this thing. So. Oh, nice. Yeah. But anyway, so. Uh, K Kabuki Keeper. Kabu no. <laughs> Zuboom. Kazoom. I love Kazoom. I think that's great. Kazoom. Yeah, that works perfectly. <laughs> but we'll see. Um, Kazoom needs to happen. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, Zoom, Zaboom. <laughs> we got all these uh, <laughs> suggestions. <laughs> all these suggestions. Yeah, so and anyone. Yeah, I multi card games are fun. Yeah, uh, Atari Age has released a number of multi card games, especially for like Christmas ones. Yeah. Um, yeah, they're a lot of fun because if you don't like one of the games, you got three more. You know? Yep, exactly. So, anyway, so yeah, so if anyone can get to a uh, nine 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 on this, uh, nine 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 nine, yeah, so uh, it does have oh the game God. does have an ending. Uh, I think S Steve Ramirez yeah. actually beat it at least on novice. So it's a uh, it's a challenge. Wow. It's yeah. a challenge at least. If anybody so, can do it, he can. Yeah, I, yeah. I personally stink at this game. So I mean, I can get through like <laughs> three or four levels, and then I mean, it gets insane. Especially advances like crazy, but it's uh, it's fun. It's, oh. it's plenty of challenge and plenty of options for people that. Uh, are interested in just a quick uh, quick game so yeah I, i'm terrible at kaboom i still haven't earned my patch uh, i got like 2500 you need 3000 i'm like that close okay but, yeah yeah so pat dropping paddle games catching things especially when your your thing gets smaller and smaller why yeah, ah. yeah i'm not sure I, I i should have had it um obviously that's how they do it in the arcade it's even worse if you put on difficulty a the um um the paddle is actually half as half the size. That's how it actually is in the arcade. So this is actually oh, cool. twice as big than what you get in the arcade. So it's uh, wow. anyway. So okay. So um, uh, anything else you'd like to say or people you'd like to thank before we let you go? I just like uh, certainly want to thank you guys. Obviously, you guys do a lot of game testing, not just with uh, these games, but you know certainly all the other games come up. Um, uh, obviously, yeah. you got to thank Nathan. He's been involved in all, all my games. Um, did the title screen for this one I actually i think i drew the rocks on this one and the paddle i think that's mine so um <laughs> well they're great rocks yeah, and a great yeah, exactly <laughs> and of course you know um tj he's always involved in my games one way or another it seems um, all the game testers steve um, ramirez uh, guys that add sound to my games you know whether it's uh, bob from the old days or lee um the guys that do all the the boxes um um I'm forgetting about Mike Haas, of course. He did the great sound on uh, um, Wizard of War and Mappy. Um, the guys who do the boxes, of course. I mean, it's, it's really a team effort. You know, Dave Dries, uh, Nathan, of course, again, Dave Exton. Um, so, and of course, Al. Can't forget Al and Tari H, all the great work that they do uh, publishing these games. So it's, uh, you know, I know he's like tearing what's left of his hair out um, trying to get all these games out to people. So, uh, you know, oh, yeah. certainly is uh, his hard work does not go un unnoticed so thanks Alan thanks uh, just thanks to everyone I mean it's a great community it's, who would have thought you know almost 50 years later that you know we'd all be sitting oh. around you know I'd be uh, you know in South Carolina you know watching uh, <laughs> talking about some Atari games that I made and watching all these other great games people have done so, so. I, I would definitely never have guessed <laughs> yeah, exactly, <I> know. <laughs> us still playing this console this this much later would be like oh that old thing yep ah we got much we got vr games now what do we, what do we need with these funky little games yep, yeah exactly so, so. It's, it is a it is a great community yeah so i 100 percent agree okay so thanks for hanging out with us once again yep john yeah we're heading out now we're going to go watch the kentucky derby i think it starts in like 
eight minutes for anyone who's interested. Oh. If you like a horse Get your best in. Exactly. <laughs> but anyway. Okay. But, well, good luck with that. Good luck with your bets. You uh, enjoy the racing. Absolutely. Oh, so. wait one second. We have to show the poster. Oh, yeah, of course. Yes. Very quickly. Uh, that one? Let me go to a big view. <laughs> oh, where is the biggest view? That one's pretty big. There we go. Uh, I'm going to just uh, go away from uh, John for a second. There we go. Nice. Big, big, big view. There we go. It's a gorgeous poster. So Very nice. If you like posters, there's one included with Zookeeper of the cover. It's excellent. There we go. So thanks once again, John. Wonderful. And we will talk with you soon. Okay. Thanks, everyone. Thanks. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 Excellent. People have pointed out there's probably a memory leak, which I agree with. I think that makes a lot of sense. That um, it seems to happen after a certain amount of time. Mm. And now that we've gotten rid... And it, obviously it's to do with... I, I, I'm pretty sure it's probably back better again because it happened last time after we disconnected. Let's see. Shh. Yep, it's good. Hello, sir. So we disconnect from the person. So we just can't. We have to keep keep the talking amount limited, <laughs> so that we which can is, which is disconnect fine, before the memory leak. We're already an hour behind, so you know. yeah, it's good again. Yes, thanks, Al. Excellent. <laughs> Phew. Phew. Um. So at least we know how to fix it without disconnecting. So I only have at to least, join. Yeah. Two parts. Yeah. In post production. <laughs> <laughs> which it might as well be 10 if it's one which is terrible but, um so next one we're going to go to is scramble xe mm. so i'll let you put that away okay. um and then we're going to talk with uh cafe man ron lloyd uh and his game adventure 2 xe oh, awesome yes um always uh john 624Y says, I always look forward to what new arcade port Champ Games is working on. Mm -hmm. And that is for sure. And um, speaking of that, we have, later this month, because it is May now, um, John Shampo's Champ Games new homebrew. We're going to be debuting it. World exclusive debut, May 21st. That is a Friday. Um, so we'll be having him on. Will we have him on? Yeah, we'll have him on. Um, and talking about his brand new game that we don't know what is. We don't know what it is. No. And that's always fun. No. And the best part about not knowing what it is is I don't have to do any prep for it. <laughs> <laughs> but I actually have done some prep. I think I've done about six fake cartridge covers so far of things that I want it to be. Oh. <laughs> and things yes. that I think it, John, it we're, might be. We're guessing. So... One of the things that you need to do yes. is release those cartridge covers after it's released. Oh, yeah, yeah. I'll do so it on the show. So you can be like, these were our top six yeah. suspicions. Suspicions. And, and, it's not going to be one of these because... Probably not. It's probably not. It's probably not. Either he, he got one of them right or yeah. these are ones you want to exist. So that's a good, <laughs> that's a yeah. good example. Anyway. Then I can say, oh, hint, hint. Yeah. Make one of these. Yeah. <laughs> um, so looking forward to that. Yes. Uh, we both hope it's one specific thing. Well, we have one that we want it to be, but, <laughs> yeah. but we don't I'm know what it is. Stay. And but if it's not, that's fine too. Uh, and, and there's a bunch yeah. that he's announced or talked about that it's not. So we can rule out those. Mm. Like he's working on or he said, oh, I've started this. Like mm. elevator action. He's already started that. So it's not going to be that one. It's going to be something else. Okay. He started kicks. Nice. It's not going to be that one. Okay. Right? Yeah. Um, and you can see that, oh, he didn't even plug his new uh, homepage champ.games okay and you can download uh demo roms from there you can buy i mean we talked about this last episode but yeah there's people here that don't know anything about it yeah um you can buy uh the binaries of three of his games right now nice. galagon something and something i think map mappy and something else mm -hmm. wizard of war maybe yeah. um and if you have the cartridge uh then you get it for half price mm -hmm. if you can prove you bought the cartridge from atari age so um, all those people that want binaries, there are some available Excellent. now yeah. for Champ Games. So we're going to move on to 
Uh, Scramble XE, and we recently played Scramble. We did. For the yeah. 7800. For the 7800, And coincidentally, yes. John Shampo made Scramble. Am, I, am I wrong? No. He made Scramble. Yes. Yes. For the 2600. Yes. So many games. Oh, my God. I have to keep, like, 300 games in my mind. <laughs> Homebrews in yeah. my mind. And they're both excellent, excellent uh, versions, and I'm looking forward to seeing this one mm. as well. Um, so I am going to get the uh, Atari XEGS okay. hooked up. All it's right. only like two plugs. Can you? Oh, okay. Will it take long? No. It'll take like 10 two seconds. Because I can start showing Oh, my off. legs. I should get up more often. Yeah, you do need to get up and move around. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> ow, ow, ow. Good night, Steve and Thomas, who, are, who have to run off. Good night, Steve and Thomas. Oh, oh, oh. Yeah, oh. you've been sitting too long. Oh, I've been sitting way too long. Ow. Oh, and let's shift over to the video input. Okay. Am I sitting on my... Yes. Yeah. Not that I need it for this, because we're not talking not to anyone. at the moment. Okay, good. Excuse oh, can you get my oh. ears a rest? Okay. Oh. oh, it's already on. It's been on this time. Oh, you already opened it. I know. I just opened the you. flap. That's how oh, dare you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's uh, take a look. Could do another giveaway while switching over. Yes, we could. It's four o'clock. It is. Oh, my goodness. Should we do another cartridge? Yes. Guess the cartridge? Yeah. That was a lot of fun, actually. Yeah, I think that was a good one. Yeah, so not yet. Not yet. Not yet? Okay. No. Um, we'll look at this first, though. We'll look at this first, because uh, it's not quite four yet. No. We're catching up with the giveaways now. Uh, so let's switch over to... There, there we, we go. go. Scramble. Actually, is this the right view? Yep. No, there's a better one. Oh, that's... Oh, you've got the desktop on there. Yeah. Anything good on there? Can't take it back. <laughs> mm, maybe. Oh, well. What can you do? Uh, so this is a uh, scramble XE um, from Paul Lay, known as Playsoft, uh, for the XE. So let's take a look. It is a very very fun game, and we've played it in two forms already. This cartridge can be only be used with the Atari 400, 800 XL, and XE, with minimum of 32k of RAM. So I think the XEGS does qualify for that. Thank goodness. Um, Great cover art. It is. Now, who's this done by? Um, it doesn't say on the outside, but we'll take a look on the inside and take a look at the cartridge. Was it fun putting all these together? How long did it take to put all these together? I'll interview you. Well, okay. Uh, it's hard to say because my mom called halfway through, and I think I spoke oh. on the phone with her for about 45 minutes. So <laughs> uh, I, it was like a, an hour and a half. Probably all together oh, at the end. I love this it took cartridge. Some time. An hour and a half? That's not too bad. I think so. I oh. don't think it took me too, too long. This cartridge okay. shell is gorgeous. Isn't it nice? This one Look I really it. like. Look, you can see the chips in it. And you can see the scramble on yeah. the chip. Oh my goodness. Um, is it blue? It's slightly blue. Uh, you guys can't it's really like gray, see it. It's a gray. It's a gray blue color. Gray blue. It's and clear. Really cause pretty. Because when I hold it up to the light, it's slightly bluish. Yeah, bluish gray. Maybe it's just the temperature of the lights, but it is absolutely gorgeous. Mm -hmm. um, this manual. Of course, beautiful manual Look as well. Mm -hmm. Really, really nice. Let's see if we can find out who did the cover art before we get too far. Uh, programming, Paul Lay and Harvey Kong Tin. The box, manual, label designs, and artwork are by John Calcano, Atari Boy 2600. Uh, let's put that back up. Oh, these don't stand up very well. Um, uh, manual layout, G. Tony Morse. A manual text, a Matt Reich, Reich, Richard, Richard. And publishing and production, Albert Yeruso uh, in Atari Age. And uh, let's see if I can find a nice page there. So there's a very detailed look at the ship. Oh, nice. Gorgeous. Look at that. Really, really nice. Lovely. Yep. 
spotted a QR code on the bottom of the box. Yes, <gasps> there is. Oh. Yes, there is. I bet that goes to Atari. Age. It's I got Atari it Age in the middle. Let me get a nice close up so people can do a. Uh, maybe a little further back. Uh, maybe closer. There. No, no, that worked. It worked. Oh. oh there you go. There we go. It it was just catching me. So somebody wants to do a screen cap of that or a screen cap and then scan it with your phone. See where that goes and you can tell me. We can I probably, am, your phone probably works just fine. I am guessing that it goes to the Atari Age store. I, it probably does. Or if they're brave specifically to the scramble, the scramble. Yeah. Um, as long as Al doesn't change the address in the future somehow, mm -hmm. might be safer to just go to the store. But, um, so we pretty much know how to play Scramble, but we'll keep the manual out just in case mm -hmm. uh, if there's something we need to look up. Uh, so if you want to pop that in, turn off the power. Turn it off, yeah. Yep. I do not know this system Leftmost well. side. Oof. Don't Oof. step on things. Try not to. No, don't try not to. Don't. <laughs> <laughs> just don't step on things. There's so much tech here. I'm going to post a picture. Yeah, there. Oh, oh, the crunchiness. Okay, good. And turned it on? Nope. <laughs> okay. Seven. And we'll make sure a... Yep, yeah, it'll come up in a second. It'll figure itself out. Oh, the light's on. Yeah. Rearrange its brain. There we go. Let's... Oh. What if I can do this? Yes. And we'll get Stay Frosty Cartridge. Uh, graphics off the screen <laughs> and this will be the view we'll go with there we go good that works so oh. it's the se it's the um second joystick that i've got plugged into the xe okay. uh, so let's put this box up again cats need feeding very soon oh yeah well so we'll after this play this and you have something to oh read, i'll do right? the giveaway and you feed the cats oh uh, okay after yeah yeah and you have something to read? Oh, it's very short. Okay. Ah! Fall down. Please don't stay up. Is there sound? Uh... Yep. Yeah. Or there's crashing. There is some crashing happening. Look at that crunchiness. Let's try that again. Can't guarantee my Atari XEGS is absolutely perfect. I don't use it very much. Oh, mm. cat hair all over me. Okay, <laughs> try again. Oh no. Oh no. It's crashing on the start. Does it not like XEGSs? Well, I guess you're not playing that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Ran no. on my 800XL before I sent you. Hope you have a keyboard. Uh, well, it seems to start without a keyboard. I do have a keyboard that I can get. Um, well, that's does it need a keyboard to start? Some games are like, you have to have a keyboard plugged in. I'll give it one more go. And if it doesn't work, we'll play a video of gameplay. Yes. From YouTube. Mm -hmm. I'm sold on this game. <laughs> <laughs> it's a lovely intro. <laughs> it is. Because that's working. Press trigger to begin. Yeah. Joystick. Because it's a computer game, right? Mm. So it's expecting you to press 1 through 9 and stuff. But the trigger does start it. We're going to be playing a video. Oh, that's a shame. It is a shame. It, I'm gonna it blame, is us, not it, yeah. for the record. So I'm going to blame um, my system <laughs> for this. So I'm going to queue up the... Uh, YouTube video for this um, so that we can actually show some game play footage mm -hmm. of it. Because um, I, I was not able to test these games <laughs> beforehand because it was going to be surprise. Yes. Not that I would have been able to play it anyway because I don't have another X, X, e, yeah. Yeah, Atari 8-bit system. Um, but that's okay. There we go. Oh, thank you. I found it, I think. Yes, this is the right one. I 
think. Yeah, it looks good. Okay, so go full screen on that. Ooh. Hmm. Do you have a way to play it? You'll have to use an old. Oh, what I'll do is I'll put it on the uh, laptop, actually. Oh, because it'll right? show the, the laptop, yeah. Yeah. Because it'll show the laptop screen in full. Oh, my God. Yeah. Yeah, press the forward button. And it'll get the audio from the, the laptop. Okay. That'll good. be easier. Oh, live. Live video. Uh, yeah. Uh, that's, that'll work. There we go. This should be good. Well, we should be able to hear it, too. Yeah. Actually, if... Here's something. Hopefully it's not too loud. It's going to be partially obscured by us in the chat, but that's okay. You guys can watch on YouTube later. Um, so let's uh, read it out. Oh, there's some noise. Good. Read out my notes. <laughs> Message from Paul Lay. Just a staple these upside down. It's just wonderful. Oh, nice explosion. I like that. Um, so, Paul A. says, I did some preliminary work on Scramble in 2014 when I saw the arcade level data posted and explained by Serrano J and Pac-Man Plus. I put together a quick character set and got the landscape scrolling, then put it aside as a possible future project. Press the N key. Mm -hmm. Seems to be a scene that is caught in causing audio stuff. Audio stuff. Uh, uh, put it aside as a possible future project. I picked it up again at the beginning of 2018, and together with Kiwi Love, who did the graphics design, I spent the next six months working on it. The 5200 version was posted on Atari Age at the end of July but I was very disappointed to find it immediately ported to the eight Atari 8-bit computers without permission. Despite both versions having been made freely available, Albert asked if he could publish them in the store. I think Kiwi Love contacted Atari 2600 Boy, who did the wonderful, uh, Atari Boy 2600, who did the wonderful box, manual, and label art. Okay, a little high. Well, I turned it down. Oh, it is a bit. Uh, uh, Albert dealt with the manual, written by Matt Reichardt, and laid out by G. Tony Morse. So it looks really, really nice. Um, great version of, uh, of Scramble there. And we played Scramble the other day on the 7800 and mm -hmm. actually finished it on normal mode. Um, so it's a super fun game. Not too long. No. So you can get it you can uh, complete it in very short order, so it's a really good game to plug in if you don't want to get too committed to a game. So that is my notes from him. Um, so if you want to get the next giveaway. Yes, and I will feed the, the next cartridge. The ah, here's the piece of paper. Are those Fuji logos for the explosion sprite? That's what I thought, too. Yeah, I'm pretty sure. Oh, they are. They've got the triple. It looked like two, just the two going out, but it does have a... Is that an illusion? It's hard to tell. They're only on the screen for a second. The Konami logo. Okay. There we go. So that is available to purchase. Oh, boy. Okay. It's going to be hard? Uh, yeah, because there's nothing on here. Uh, okay. Is there a third option? There is, but I'm, I don't even know what that is. I don't think this is going to be good. She chose F-18 Hornet, which has nothing on it. It, it, it There's no picture at all. You're funny. I don't well, know. That's I, is that better? Yeah. You know what that is? And that's a 2600 game. Oh, good. So that was a 7800 game. Yeah. Um, text logo. 
Yeah, that's your hint. It has a text logo. <laughs> I guess that does narrow it down a bit. Yeah, yeah. But still, that's all I can say. Yeah. Yeah, not too, not too much fun. Combat, yeah. yeah actually, early 2600 games had just text. Like the really first ones. So it actually doesn't narrow it down, which is pretty funny. Uh, okay, are you guys ready for the next $50 Atari Age store giveaway? Um, this cartridge, let me get my chat up. Uh, first letter's an F. Yeah, I guess I could have done that. How many games does it say it contains? Yeah, okay, there would be ways to do it, yeah. Okay, so this game, uh, things on the cover. There is, I'll start with the hardest, there's a bird flying in the air. Oh, these are classic, these are classic. These are all classic cartridges. Um, we should get some, uh, some homebrew ones later on. There's a bird on the cover, uh, flying. Uh, there is a shovel on the cartridge. Nobody's guessed it yet. It's not easy. Uh, there is dirt on the cover. Uh, there is grass as well on the cover. Boom! Cafe Man 2D. It is Gopher. You guessed it. By US Games. And we'll switch to the webcam. Boom. Nice. Gopher fast. by US. Uh, that was, that was really fast. <laughs> yeah. I would never have guessed that. Somebody knows their covers. So, Cafe Man 2D. Who has not won yet. Excellent. So that is good. So that's our four o'clock giveaway. Cafe Man 2D. Gopher cart. You don't win the gopher cart. <laughs> it's my gopher cart. Um, it's mine. <laughs> you can't have it. <laughs> well, you could. I'll take the 50. You could probably buy that for less than 50. Mm -hmm. um, so maybe it's maybe it's a good trade. I'm not sure. I'd have to check on prices, but usually it has to be pretty rare. Pretty rare. So congratulations, Cafe Man 2D. You win a $50 gift certificate to Atari, the Atari Age store where you can buy Scramble. Mm -hmm. Or um, any of these other games that we're going to be talking about. Cats are fed. They're happy. Yeah, they're they're munching away over there. And so. we're going to be talking with Cafe Man <laughs> next. Next. <laughs> um, Ron Lloyd, uh, who made Adventure 2 XE. And then after that, we'll be uh, talking with Michael Brown um, about Panic Rooms nice. for the 2600, which I have not played, so you'll be the first one to play it. Mm, um, and so. uh, that might be a, sec and a good second option for the show. Uh, next show. Oh yes, for the because games that we haven't really had we a haven't to we play. haven't had a uh, lot of chance to play. Yeah. Uh, so let's let me get uh, Ron on the chat here. So sorry, what is our next? Game? Oh sorry, it is Adventure Two XE, oh. and uh, good luck to us. Oh, just hopefully it works. Work. Uh, we're talking with him through Skype. Oh, this is a nice one. This is really nice. It's really nice? Yes. Yeah? It's a okay. beautiful box. So, we're calling him up right now. Oh, yep. Switch soon. over. Go for it. Reveal. Oh. Oh, it's oh so get it in pretty. frame. Oh my god, gorgeous. It is gorgeous. Hello, Ron. One second, we'll get you hooked up here. Just showing your box off. <laughs> <laughs> and it is just gorgeous. Yes. Beautiful, the beautiful art is box. Beautiful. So let me get you on the screen there with your box. Um, 
and get my headpiece in. Hello, Ron. Hi, can you hear, Excellent. Can you hear me? I can. Welcome right. to Atari Age Day, and congratulations on your release of Adventure 2 XE. Um, beautiful box art. Oh, it's gorgeous. Um, who did the box art? Let's start off with that. That was uh, David Exton. David Exton. Yes, it does fall in line with Robot City look. This very beautiful, almost painted style. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Do you know if he uh, does it all digitally? Um, I think he does. Um, I don't know if you've seen the manual, but there's uh, there's some really nice artwork pictures in there, too. But only show one of them if you're going to show, because we don't want to give the... Well, it's up to you. It's your show. <laughs> oh, okay. We'll, we'll, yeah, we'll try and keep it limited, because we do want people to have some surprises. That's why I only yeah. show, like, one page in the manual... Oh, oh, so what is this stuff? Yeah. Oh, some extras. We won't tell tell us what we should show and what we shouldn't yeah. show, because there is some special things here. Well, um, if somebody doesn't want to see it, I'll just avert your eyes. <laughs> but um, <laughs> it's it's okay. it's similar to the 5200 package, but not the same. So I don't care what you, you want to show. Go ahead. Oh, OK, great. So here here is the manual, which has the same uh, cover, same as the cover. It's gorgeous. Little key on the back. There's the Atari Age logo hidden in the key. Your key to fun, Atari Age. <laughs> it's beautiful, beautiful, gorgeous. And then, oh, then the cartridge. The with same, the same as the, beautiful design on the front. Yep, yeah, and I think the same um, cartridge that, that gray, color. Gray, beautiful clear. gray, Look blue, at that. clear. Oh, that's so pretty. Very, very nice. Yeah, mm -hmm. it is. It is awesome. Yeah, there are uh, very there are gray, and then there's um like that's the charcoal cartridge, right? Okay. They're saying I'm too low. I don't know. I can't boost my volume from here, but if you can, it might be a good. Oh, idea. I've turned. You were low at first, then I turned you up because I had to bring it down for the video. So it should be good now. Everybody, oh, it's fine now. Okay, good. good. Okay, <laughs> I'm following the uh, the chat there. I'm I'm behind. Okay. Yeah, yeah. there's always like a little bit of delay even for us too. Okay, so let's bring you up in full. So, uh, yeah, welcome to the show. Um, now, I'm not as, as versed in 8-bit, um, the 8-bit realm. Um, so tell us uh, your history with uh, making uh, games for the Atari 8-bit, okay. just briefly. Um, yeah, I, I could talk for an hour and it would be boring, but... <laughs> If you're gonna, it starts with um, around the year 2000. Um, I got all my Atari stuff back from family, and I started to fix the 5200 controllers and, and buy cartridges. That's when I found Atari Age and Digital Press, oh, and I made my first uh, 5200 game, which was this. This was pub ah. October 2002, Coffee Yellow Copter, and uh, it took me a little over a year to do in 6502 ASM, and about the same time. Uh, an Atari Age user, uh, Alan Davis, contacted me, and we made this, which wasn't published till 2007. This is the 5200 version of Adventure 2. So um, the, the scene was a little different back then, of course, you know, and, and the bar keeps getting raised, you know, by the quality of everything that you see. So um, we started there. We got an artist. Uh, we called ourselves the Square Trio team. So, you know, Alan Davis, oh, yeah. what he did is he provided a, um, a decompression routine in the first of the basic engine. And what that did is um, when you have a, a screen, an Antic 4 screen, this is true of the 8 bits and the 5200, it takes 960 bytes. But he could, yeah. we can compress it down to 300 bytes, maybe 200 bytes. So we could get a lot out of 32K. So that's what Alan did. And um, we designed the, uh, the the four kingdoms and the troll and the minotaur back then. And uh, Keith, who was goes, he goes by Raccoon Lad on Atari Age. Yeah. He was our pixel artist. Uh, he's just fantastic the way he can you know reuse pixels in, with different colors uh, yes. in the character set. Just like the Mario thing when you first realize that the cloud and the bush were the same thing. Yes. You know? Yes, a very, very clever way of, of uh, keeping the amount of data low is, is tricking, tricking with colors and portions and reusing, yeah. So um, people were asking for an 8-bit uh, an version of Adventure 2. So in 2010, uh, another Atari Age uh, user, uh, TEP392, 
who's uh, Perry Thwente. I think I'm saying his name right. Sounds about right. That's I think that's how I would pronounce yeah. it. <laughs> he he ported it for me because I did not know how to do bank switching and all that. So he he, he went from 32k to 64k bank switched. And uh, off and on since then, I've been I didn't want to just have the same game. I wanted to make some changes, some improvements. And there it is a whole new game. It, it plays the same at first, but there's a lot of uh. a lot more variety and just changes in optimizations in it. So let's uh, let's actually get it up on the screen now, and uh, pray that this one works. Now, do we need a keyboard to start this, no. or can we use the joystick? Uh, the joystick button should start it, and Excellent. and the XE uh, buttons have functions like pause, uh, go, okay. go back to title screen. Uh, I forget what does what. Okay, great. So it's, so far, it's, it's look. Oh my God, that's beautiful. The castle is gorgeous. Um, so can you go over, uh, some of the updates between, uh, the 5200 and this version and what you've, uh, what you've updated? Yeah, sure. Um, well, uh, one of the first things I did because there, there were some collision errors in the, in the 5200 version, which I hated. So I optimized stuff. Um, another complaint or comment from the 5200 version was the randomness. And actually, uh, one of the things that I wish I could go back in time and change of that version was the, the green key, I think, was always in the gold castle. It never changed no matter what. And I did that during testing, so I wouldn't have to find it. Uh -huh. And I forgot, I just <laughs> forgot to all about it. So it's that way. Oh, no. <laughs> so for this version, I have two, uh, two, two randomness selections from the title screen. There's normal, and that is so much more uh, variety than what the 5200 had. But then I have one called very, very random. And that's just um, with a little bit of tweaks so that you don't have an unwinnable game. It just says, okay, yeah. you got the gold key. Which of the four kingdoms is it in? Okay, is it inside the castle? Right? And it does that for every item randomly. So, you know, everything could be on one screen or it could be the most inaccessible location uh, ever. Yeah. Um, I added a, you know, I've heard you complain about dark mazes. You don't like them. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Well, that's just me. I don't want to influence like programmers because I'm sure some people like dark mazes, well, but they're oh I don't. My God. I, oh. I, I hated that about the 2600 because uh, you know when you're trying to find your way through the maze and you're getting hit by the dragon or the the bat come, oh. it frustrated me. So I never I'll go back to that. I, I never put that into this game. Your colors are interesting, by the way. They're, they're pretty. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, yeah. I, uh, I noticed that in Scramble, too, they weren't quite right. Yeah. I don't know what's making... I mean, I, I rarely play my XEGS, so I'm not... Like, the green looks good, and uh, the dragon looked pretty good, nice orange, but I'm sure the pink is probably not supposed to be that pink. No, no, no. Do you have a PAL? Was there a PAL XEGS? The colors are very different. Uh, Let's take a look at what it's saying. I, it's very unlikely that I have a PAL. Everybody can see this too. Uh, but this will tell us what... No, it says uh, 720 by 240p NTSC. So it's definitely an NTSC version. Well, anyway... Uh, oh. Maybe I need to tweak... Uh, is there a dial just like in uh, the 7800 for um, the Hue? Uh, inside an XEGS? I don't know. Okay. Well, people are... A, pl a pot to twist inside, as somebody says? That's what I was thinking. Some sort of pot that I can adjust it. But we'll troubleshoot that later. <laughs> yeah. For now, it's the pink brick road. <laughs> Follow the pink brick road. So I think what I was saying is I hate dark mazes too, but I wanted to... Yes. I wanted to include something like that. And, and because this is not like the, the simple Atari 2600 screens... I, tr I actually programmed the spotlight effect. It did not wor work in this game the same way. Oh. So, yeah. so what I did is I have a dark mode that you can turn on or off for any, any variation. Um, and, and it doesn't make the whole screen go black. It doesn't do what you probably think it does. Um, yeah. Portions of it, but what it does, it's tied to the dragons. When a dragon's chasing you, the screen will go black. You know, so you enter a screen and you're trying to go through the, the plants. And uh, the, dra yeah. the dragon comes in and everything goes black except for the, the, the plants. So you kind of see some oh. of it. Oh, okay, that's nice. So it's like dim. It's almost like it's underlit. That 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 would be very. And there are flashes. So that's another change um, in the XE version. Also, the um, yeah. the alternate icons I just put on the title screen, 
and uh, they have powers or abilities now. Like the the bat, every time he does anything, opens a castle or kills a dragon, he gets flight. And if if you have uh, okay. if you know the maze, I've beat the game with the bat in like under two minutes. You know, oh with oh my. <laughs> So, so that's some of the changes that were made. There were graphics and sound changes. Um, I experimented a yeah. lot. I, I didn't want a looping uh, musical thing because it got annoying to me almost immediately. So it, right. it'll just play some clips when you do things. Oh, that's nice. So very, very background subtle um, indicators more yeah, than music. That's, that's good. Um, so the original adventure is a beloved classic. I love the Atari logo on that one screen, by the way. Mm -hmm. That's that's gorgeous. Yeah. Um, so, um, original adventure is a, a beloved classic and and groundbreaking game for the twenty six hundred, uh, uh, in terms of how how big of a, a world you can have on a console. Um, is it is it a game that you played when you were uh, younger, and was it the motivation? Be behind you know updating it for the 5200 now for the 8-bit uh, what what is your relationship with adventure actually i got my 2600 um i think in 1982 which was kind of late okay and i never bought adventure but I, good deals though <laughs> not yet 83 84 was oh <laughs> Damn. so i wanted the new games like pac-man and yours revenge and you know berserk i didn't i never bought adventure um, I, I played it at Kmart's and things. I could never figure it out, you know. But, um, yeah. but that's different. Like in the 2000s, you know, I was reading about the game. I saw people loved it. And I through emulation and then my eventually my own Atari I re repurchased. I played it quite a bit. It's a good game. Oh, yeah. But it did, it's, it, it's a lot to it. It, did, it, it didn't it motivate. It's such an early game. I'm sorry. It, doesn't, it didn't motivate this. It was Alan Davis's idea to start this. And he had a couple screens by another artist. I think it was Maurice Molyneux. Uh, he's, uh, I think he's Big Mo on Atari. He, just, he doesn't post a lot. But um, he had some nice like pictures of, of a castle and something else I can't remember. And uh, mm. as soon as I saw it, I said, yep, yeah, I went in on it. And I was uh, almost done with coffee at the time, that game. But then um, mm. um, we had to get a, an artist to do the whole game. So we, we used Raccoon Lad's designs. But it was really it was really Alan Davis's uh, idea to to do it, and uh, I didn't want it just to be like the same game with bigger mazes. So there's it's different, you know. There's a, a troll that steals stuff, not the bat. Yep. Right. Yeah. So a little twist to make it uh, to update it. Yeah, and make it its own game. Um, and even like the, uh, the, I don't know if Tanya knows, but like if you if you hold the button in, you drop an item. Okay. But if uh, okay. but okay. but if you tap it. It, it manipulates it like left and right. Oh, oh, that's easier than you know dropping it and moving around it to, to position it on yourself. So, oh, that's um, smart. so when you're carrying the sword, it's on your left, but a dragon comes in on the right. You can just tap. Oh, that's and that was that's so much better. Yeah, you know, the fifty two the fifty two hundred version. You know, it has two two buttons. So we use the top and lower buttons for that version. But uh, okay, someone had the idea just to tap or to hold. You know, and it works. That's very smart. Quality of life kind of enhancements that, you know, don't ruin the game. Don't make it, uh, it just makes it less frustrating. Okay, Kat, you got to get off there. Kat, get, get, get. Somebody asked what your posters are in behind you. I see a Star Trek and a Star Wars, but the Star Wars is a bit unusual. I'll duck down. You can see the, uh, what is Oh, Jurassic Park. It's a, yeah, I got those. At, with the music. Yeah, with the musical notes on them, yeah. Yeah. Um, and TEP392 says it's actually pronounced Tinty. Tin T. I would have never guessed that. I didn't know that. Yeah, well, there we go. And now it's left my brain immediately, and I'll mispronounce his name for sure. Okay. <laughs> Thanks, Perry. I didn't know. Yeah. Um, let's see. Any questions from the audience? No. Awesome job, Ron. Yeah, it's a big game. It, I suggest um, playing game one, the easiest version. Um, you can use an alternate yeah. icon, like the crab, actually. Um, and there was a contest. That's where, where these icons came from with the 5200 version. People drew all these different icons, but the crab actually can go over the backgrounds real slow and cheat. So, you know, uh. you know, because it's such a big game, if you're terrible at it, play game one, beat it. Mm. Play it again. Try, That's nice. Try to find the, uh, there's three dots in every level, which I call bat eggs, but it's a homage to, you know, Warren Robinette's dot. And um, yes. to get the highest ranking, because there, there are end game rankings, um, 
I think you have to find at least two of them. Maybe you have to find three. But I would just stick with the same game for a couple of plays. You should. It's small. You should beat it in, you know, five ten minutes at most. And then oh, oh good. Then go on to the harder ones if you want. Yeah, and, and it uh, expands the map. Yep. Bigger and bigger. Yes. Yeah. Yep. More dangers. More enemies. Yeah. Yep. Very nice. Yep. Um. Yeah, it's gorgeous. I'd love to see what it actually looks like. Because the pink... <laughs> That's close. What is the pink supposed to be? I, I think brown. Oh, that's oh, way really? off. Oh, oh my yeah, goodness. Like a, yeah. like a tan or a brown. Okay, yeah. Something is... Yeah, I'll have to investigate that for sure. So I was going to... And... Uh, I was going to show you... Um, talk about the dev process. I dug out a... Oh, yes. You know, this was the Minotaur that um, uh, Raccoon led sent to me like an email so, so you have to digitize everything into ones and zeros you know so i still had that uh and then for oh that's gorgeous and for the music what i do like I'm, I'm a guitar player so i have this tablature you know and i oh, I, write, yeah. I write little ditties and things in tablature but then i go and i use my charts to convert that to pokey music uh, okay and, and, and what uh what do you use to uh say program the game and the music uh, what tools do you use or what are the common tools to uh, that people use I, I just use notepad um for my source code nothing fancy yeah. um yeah. for for the music you know i you, you compose the music in musical or guitar tablature and then you have to convert it to timing and frequencies of a pokey table i don't have any tools to do that i just type it in it's it's a little <laughs> tedious yeah but it sounds good yeah you know yeah so uh by by typing in notepad are you um using assembly then Yes, it's 6502 assembly language. Uh, I use uh, DASM, or there's yeah. actually uh, this one was in TASM TASM, which was an older version. Yeah. And be, I don't know why I never converted it over to DASM. Like Coffee was using DASM, and anything going forward now, I'm going to use DASM because it's much better, you know. But it's still right. it's still like 90% the same to me. Um, you compile the code, and the the banks, the bank switching, um, it's a lot more complicated now, and I got help with that. So that it can do one that the XE can run or that the Atari Max carts can run. Right, and um, I guess with the Atari 8-bit systems, you have to take into account the different variations of uh, the computers and obviously even the XE GS. Um, do you, did you program this, or do people program for the lowest common denominator usually, uh, or they go, oh well, I'm going to leave out this group of people who don't have enough memory, et cetera, et cetera. How does that kind of thought process work? Um, well, since this was a port, um, the 5200 can handle one contiguous 32K address, but the 8-bits okay. cannot. So we use the RAM for the source code. So you need 64K uh, of RAM to run this. Uh, an Atari 400, it would not run on, I believe. Okay. So you, you, it does not work on the 400 then? I don't believe so, no. Okay. Um, excellent. So this, this looks like a lot of fun. And I know there's a ton of love for adventure games because so many people have hacked adventure and made their own adventure style games. And uh, so I, I'm sure with all these lovely graphical flourishes like that fountain, which I just saw for the, for the first time, um, people are. Oh, there's the bridge. You so see the bridge. At the so yeah. if if you grab the bridge and you uh, and you tap your button, uh, it, it uh, it'll change it from vertical to horizontal. Oh. And really. And that you tap your button. Oh, you don't need to right now. There you go. Uh -huh. So cross over it. So lay it down again. Oh no, you have to lay it down. Pick it up oh. and then. It did work. Press it. Is that working? Cross the bridge now. Oh. No, I oh. pick it up. It's okay. It did work for a second. It works, but you can't oh. bump into the edges, or you'll um, you'll pick it back up oh. again. Once you're oh, I see. Once you're on it, you, it should be fine. But you're bumping into like the edge of it at the top, I think. There we go. There we go. Okay, so now try and do it horizontally. I think I'm a um, couple seconds behind. Yeah, probably. So I'm not sure what screen. There you go. There we go. No. Tap it to, there we go. And now tap it to put it on the other side of you. Or hold it. Double tap it. What was it? <laughs> you just tap quickly to change it and you hold it to drop it. 
Oh, tap quickly to change it. Yeah. Okay. Just, just, just one tap. Yep. Yeah. You need, yep. you need it Excellent. vertical. That's not the only way to cross these islands, by the way. That's the hard. Mm. That's the hard way. Um, the hard way. Yeah. You can. The hard but interesting way. Your sword can yeah. cut uh, wood planks out of the logs, and you can. Oh, and you can. Wow. You can drag on some screens, like two screens, and build little bridges over these. Oh wow. So, that's the, so this is quite quite different. There's a lot of different, like, big upgrades from the original adventure. Like, I think so, yeah. It, it's a complex yeah. game. Now you're going to get eaten unless you run off the screen. <laughs> uh, no, you're... Oh, 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 she made it. She got bit a little... Oh, your little character gets bitten a little bit. Yeah. Yep. Oh, that's cool. Oh, now and you're dead. I'm dead. <laughs> Excellent. Well, we will end it there. Anything else you'd like to add or people to thank or anything you'd like to say? I'm not really, um, I know you're, you're behind on time, but thanks, you know, Atari Age and Albert and the artists and all the people with the forums who uh, helped me test these things. Uh, appreciate it all. Um, I don't know if I'm going to do another game or not, but I've got like half a dozen of ideas and they're all started, so maybe, but uh, I'm not going to say anything until I officially announce that. But th thanks for having me. Oh, no problem. Thank you for coming on Cafe Man. Okay. Okay, talk to you soon. Okay, bye, you guys. Bye-bye. Thank you. And you're done. Oh, let's go back to video camera. There we go. And um, so, really fun. Uh, so, so it's much. Too bad fun. there's pink, but now we know <laughs> that my uh, Atari XEGS has a little bit of tuning to have happen yeah. to it, so we don't have to uh, see the pink roads. <laughs> yep. That's funny. And we won't reveal this. Yes. Because um, I think that's what he was referring to. Yeah, there's some extra stuff in extra with stuff. the cart, and we'll leave it for the people who um, yeah, purchase buy it. the box in the cart. Yeah, because he was a little hesitant to go, oh, maybe don't show Don't show everything, everything and I know exactly what. why. Yeah, because so. it's really yeah. cool. It is really cool. Yeah. Um, so, uh, what time is it? Oh, my God. We're an hour and a half behind. Oh Hopefully, everybody else that's coming up on the show can forgive us and... Um, be cool with it. So we're going to go back to the 2600, which okay. we don't need to switch anything for, which is good. Just need to do that. Um, 4.30, and we have given away the 4 o'clock one, so we're still good for the giveaways. Okay. So coming up, we're going to be talking with next Michael Brown, uh, Evo Mike UK in the forums, talking about panic rooms. Nice. Then after that, we're going to be talking with Ted Fermansky, who's Revan Tooley, uh, who has made Dragon's Cash for the 7800, which was nominated for Best 7800 Homebrew. Mm -hmm. um, so Panic Rooms is brand new to me. Um, so I'm going to have to let um, Michael do the lead on most of this okay. for his game. Um, so let's just show off this and oh, where is my what is happening there it is so let's prop that up and i will get him on the line here hopefully all these people are following along actually yeah so I should keep updating people on how far behind we are. We're an hour and a half behind. <laughs> this is not good. <laughs> but it's just too much fun. I don't, I don't want to cut off people talking to them. Well, yeah, that's true. And um, so. so let's go to Zoom. And hopefully it's not too late because... Uh, you, you, you need to not have the other screen on there oh when you're God. zooming in. Yeah. You keep doing that. That's not the wrong. It's not the right screen. It isn't. Because one is with the person on the line, and one is without the person on the yes. line. Yeah. So, let's do this. There we go. Yeah, I do not need to not do that. <laughs> I think we're good on that. I'll just get him on here. And make him big. I think we are happening. I'll wait for it to come up there. Hello, Michael. And uh, we'll get you audio-wise up there. 
Excellent. Welcome to the show. Hopefully we haven't kept you up too late. I Are do. you actually in the UK as your yeah. name describes? Yeah, I certainly am. It's nearly 1am over here at the moment. Oh, no. oh. I fell asleep during John Champo's bit, actually. And, um, <laughs> I, was, I woke up and I was really upset about that. So I'm going to have to go back and watch that again, really. Oh, no. um, a very important developer to the scene. Um, quite an inspiration to a lot of developers around the world, I think, um, in the scene. So I'm um, definitely going to have to catch back up with that. Oh, yeah. So uh, we're very happy to uh, show off your new game, Panic Rooms. Well, we say and, new game. Uh, I think I finished um, testing that with a load of people on the forums about two years ago so i'm quite, <laughs> quite happy we've finally got yes. to this point really because i've been pretty confident yeah. with save gaia so uh yeah quite a journey yeah yeah your second game save gaia you're quite a bit into that uh, at this point right I, i'd say we're probably 90 percent done on that game and i i just haven't got the energy to finish it at the moment I, I, it, it's come to a point where i i I was developing at work. I was, I'm a developer by trade. I changed job recently, though, um, to yeah. more sort of management stuff. But um, I was de developing all day, coming home and developing that. And I just had a bit of burnout Oof. towards the beginning of like spring, sort of well, towards the end of after Christmas and whatever. So I'm having a bit of a break yeah. from it, get those creative juices flowing again. <laughs> yeah. And I, I don't think anybody expects you to put out a game two months after your your, yeah. your game gets released right now. So it gives you, gives you a bit of breathing room, actually. Yeah. So that's I need good. it. And it's motorbike season. Yeah. In the UK, we have really bad weather all of the time. Oh. So at the moment, we've got to take those sunny days as we get them, really. Because then the bike <laughs> goes in the garage for another eight months. So. Uh, <laughs> yes. Oh, boy. Yeah, we know we know how it is uh, living in Vancouver. You you get it out when the sun's for out. Ten months out of yeah. year, so yeah. <laughs> so we're gonna uh, show off your game here. So yeah. this is Panic Rooms, and it's got a very awesome cartoony cover to that. Who's done? Who did the artwork for this? Oh, it's a guy I um work with and get along with really well. Um, and funnily enough, uh, we started chatting, and we were randomly friends on the PlayStation Network together. And, oh um, wow. <laughs> So, um, and, and he's handed my um, butt to me a number of times on a battlefront. Um, and uh, I saw him sketching away and I was like, oh man, I make some games. And he was like, wow, let, let's work on a project together. So um, he's, uh, nice. yeah, he did uh, the artwork. And if you look in the manual as well, it kind of tells a bit of the backstory in pictures as well, in a, in a comic book style way, really. So, yeah. Um, and you've opted for the classic uh, Atari uh kind of look for the box and the yeah. cartridge and and the reason why we unlike gaia where obviously I've, I've tried to make all the sprites look really detailed in nez style sort of that era with Ooh. panic rooms i tried to make it look like more of the earlier um sort of atari games where the, the the sprites are a little bit more basic and whatever so um i went with a classic style box for that really so it kind of felt what the game was about and and, and the game as well is um it, it tries to convey kind of like emotion through sounds and whatever it tries to give you that sense of panic um right using the the, the basics of like color and sound and, and and stamina bars and stuff and it just kind of felt like the earlier earlier mechanics of video games yeah oh yeah it's it's got a little uh comic strip type intro here yeah. looks great to tell the story that's really nice. So you want to pop this in? Yes. And we'll get that going. You might want to read the story too. too. Yes. Yeah. Um, you are a rich, ruthless Texas oil tycoon who stepped over everyone and everything to get where you are today. Uh, your home is a fortress and it is glorious for all to see. However, your competitors have escaped from prison and are angry, very angry. <laughs> they found out you had them jailed so you could dominate the market. There are no good guys in this. And you play, uh, you played a bad guy. You played a bad guy. Yes. <laughs> Against worse guys. I don't know. They're all bad guys. Uh, you're after, they're after what's rightfully theirs. And most importantly, revenge. <laughs> revenge. So let's switch over to the game here. I hope you like the music as well. I mean, I, I used to kind of make a happy UK happy hardcore and release it on vinyl. Oh, nice. So um, the music's kind of like a bit beating along that sort of tip really so excellent so you might have to turn it up a little bit here so we can hear so we it. can hear it okay. yeah um so panic rooms you want to oh you want to read a little bit no no <laughs> okay. just flipping through very quickly so um tell us about the uh 
kind of the life cycle of this game. When did you start it? Um, I don't you know. You said you finished it a couple of years ago. I don't, I don't know really. I, I just kind of decided to pick up and play a game. And for some reason, I found something about the Atari. So I looked on Facebook Marketplace, picked up an Atari, never touched one before. Picked up a, yeah. a cartridge and started um, playing around with the, the Atari language. Panic rooms happened. <laughs> oh, nice. Yeah, Batari Basic has been a, a great entry tool for a lot of people who want to make their own games because it makes it, you know, somewhat simple to get into it. You have to, you know, have to learn a little bit if you've never programmed before. But if you've done any programming, and obviously that's your, uh, oh, you unplugged it for the paddles. No, I'm looking at the oh, you're difficulty at the, switches. The difficulty switches. Oh, okay. A and A, that's, that's yeah, yeah. The, the difficulty in this game really changes the mood of it. I mean, you can put it on BB and it's really quick game. You can arcade through it. Um, but yeah. it's all about that slow, horrible grind all the way, trying to escape and get away from uh, the, these bad guys and hide in your panic rooms and keep that stamina up because you, you're really, really not in good shape, you know. He's pretty <laughs> as slow. A, as a human yeah. being, mentally and physically, this character is not in good shape. Well, yeah, he's, he's, he's worried about himself and yeah. it's, it's probably taken a toll on his mind. These exactly. people that have escaped and they're out for revenge and they're in his house now. Like, so it's, it's definitely a problem. <laughs> um, tell us a bit about generation two. And is that um, yourself or does it encompass more people that well. do uh, the music and artwork? Well, it's mainly me. Um, it's me that's, that's come up with it. I'm trying to drag a couple of mates in that are quite talented um, in, into the project for um, stuff like Gara and f future projects, really. Um, I've, got, I've got some mates that are, are good with, as I say, graphics, some, some friends that are good um, developers in their own right. So I'm trying to drag a few more people into this project um, and not just do stuff like for the Atari. As much as we love the Atari, I, might, I wouldn't mind trying something with, um, with Mega Drive and things like that as well, if we've got a little team together. I have the same game, right. but, you know, ported across different generations and seen how nice. you can, what you could do with the different technological jumps and things. And um, oh, uh, nice. that's, that's, that's a dream at the moment, whether it will happen or not. Yeah. Let me just, uh, they're not hear, hearing audio because I think I had it switched over the Atari XEGS. Let me switch the audio back one second. Definitely want to hear your uh, musical stylings being a musician it's, it's just really really basic techno <laughs> even br brutally honest there we go so let's go back to the title screen again because i'm guessing there's music there we go nice now they have the music i want to give them the full Full experience of this. Um, uh, so you have um, kept this fairly under wraps, this game. Uh, you haven't released a work in progress or anything like that. So um, you had some people doing um, some beta testing for this? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. And um, did, I think they team, help out team about, quite a bit. Team about four or five people off the, the forum, stick their hand up. Um, yeah. and, and so they'll test. So we've basically been testing, getting it right, getting it right, getting it right. Uh, I, think, I think we're there now. Um, and I haven't really touched it for quite some time now. So uh, <laughs> <laughs> so it'll be a surprise when everybody else uh, gets their hands on it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, um, yeah, it didn't re really release anything on the forums. Um, because I, w I wanted it to be the complete package and the complete experience. I didn't really want to ruin anything. And it's really the same with Gaia as well. Um, right. Because there's a story there with Gaia. And, and um, I'm still right. limited with the amount of text I can do. Um, I, I just wanted to see. Because when you, when you said to save Gaia over to us, you're like, okay, don't go too far. Yeah. Because it is story-based and it un it'll... Uh, unravel as people play it so if we give it all away it'd be like well exactly exactly how, how much the more the more that's kept secret the more enjoyment people yeah. will get because it's because it is story based yeah so i can't see what you're doing on the screen because obviously i'm i mean i'm on zoom so let me have a look yeah oh yeah switch over to to, to twitch or put it side by side or there you go. yeah you don't need to see us <laughs> you know what we look like basically there's this um, safe zones in every room 
There's a little little puzzle yep. here to to um. So you have to get keys for different areas like to your house. Yeah. yeah. Apparently, uh, you don't have keys to your own house. They've locked them up. Yeah. yeah. The, the robbers <laughs> have found the keys and locked bit, them. Bit locked of a alone situation rooms. going on here. So. Yeah. <laughs> He he is a bit of he is a bit of a panic with his uh, arms uh, flailing about. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but some rooms they don't have panic rooms. You you just have to take them on and like you can collect the uh, the extras for extra. There you go. So so you got the money. Uh, and you have to collect your money because they're I'm, I'm guessing they're stealing your money. And yeah, uh, but you're gonna run out it. of stamina there. So. I know. Oh no. Oh. Shoot, 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 shoot. Oh, ah. no. But if you stay still, you get a little bit back, so you can kind of duke it out. Oh, there you go. Oh, oh, you have to hit him multiple times. Yeah. Ah! Game over. <laughs> <laughs> Try again. Um, so tell us a little bit about your upcoming epic adventure game, Save Gaia. You said you're at 90%, yeah. but you're taking uh, a little bit of a break. From it, how how expansive is it, or how expansive do you want I, it? I to don't know. I've, I, it's a 64k game. I've, I've run out of space. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I've just run out of space, really. Um, so I'm not sure I'm going to do a sequel and uh, carry it on. But I kind of I, I can't really say much where I am with the story because it'll ruin things, really. Right. But um, how many like rooms or how many screens uh, have you made in the game? Because I, I remember, I think the demo. I, well, we didn't take it very far, but we saw about um, eight or nine screens. Well, you know, Save Gaia. Um, yeah. yeah we're, we're, well, we're over 256. I mean, I'm having to... I'm, oh, my God. Yeah, I'm well over that, really, now. Um, so I'm having to use bits to kind of say, right, this is the screen variable, and here's the bit, and this is, like, bank one of screens, this is bank two of screens. Um, oh, I've geez. used every single line of text I can use with the text kernel that Carl G. Conley wrote. Um, so he, he was involved in the project quite heavily on that side of things. So, yeah, so it, it just really pushed the whole thing to the limit. I've run out of cycles. I've run out of everything now. I've run out of ROM, run, used every bit, um, bite of RAM. So it's just kind yeah. of sticking every last bit together now. So Great. Squeezing everything you can out of it. Yeah. Is, is it, is it in like, uh... Or is everything there, or are you just trying to squeeze some more? Yeah, everything's there. It's just trying. It's just trying to yeah. get all the the, lo the last bits of logic together, really, to stitch all the areas, oh, okay. whatever. So, yeah, yeah, really happy with it. I, j I just need to find the time to get it done now. So I think that'll be autumn when the weather gets a little bit worse and I can't go out on the motorbike. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and and you see, uh, releasing it through Atari Age again. Yeah. Have you? Um, yeah. yeah. In, in talks already. No, no. So it was, it, I think the deal's done. Um, Albert uh, has been uh, displaying the demo and stuff at the uh, uh, Retro Gaming Expo as well. The last one that he did. So, yeah, just nice. very keen to get it done. Oh, that's um, so, uh, wrapping it up here. Uh, any anything else you'd like to uh, say about the game or upcoming games or uh, anybody you'd like to thank? No, just everybody for supporting the project and. Uh, and for you guys for showcasing everything everything that you do it's especially albert i'm sure albert's had a million thanks already um <laughs> yeah but yeah just just thank he gets him. paid in thanks <laughs> he <does. laughs> he's, i don't know if he can cash them in but the same motorbike as me is i think he's got gsxr as well so um yeah oh wow some respect yeah, yeah exactly well thank you so much uh for uh being on the show and for uh, letting us uh, demo your game here. Cool. And uh, looking forward to uh, Save Gaia when it's done. Cool. Brilliant. See you later. So thanks so much. Thank bye bye. Bye bye. <laughs> bye. Okay. Excellent. So that now he fun. can go to sleep. Yeah. <laughs> we will have to play this more extensively. Yeah, we, I, I tried to front load the people that are in the UK and Europe. And I think he was the last one from. From, from a time zone that's yeah. that's ridiculous right now. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, Poor guy. it's like one thirty. Oh, that's oh, pretty almost late. Two maybe. I, yeah, that's know. pretty late. Yeah. <laughs> it is. Yeah. <laughs> um, so the next uh, game we're going to be playing. Actually, what time is it? Oh, it's almost time for a giveaway, but not yet. Getting there. Uh, we're going to be playing uh, and taking a look at Todd Fermansky's uh, game, Dragon's Cash for the seventy eight hundred, which we have played on the show. 
Uh, this was nominated for Best 7800 Homebrew, I believe, last year. Um, thank you very much. And then after that, we will be talking with uh, uh, Muddy Funster, Lewis Hill, uh, with his game Daredevil. And it's so funny because, you know, all these games, um, I'm sure they even feel like so long ago for the developers. When it was actually developed, yeah. But, but it takes such a long time to get it into to get something these physical, processes. This, into physical form and into... I mean, I, I completely out. understand being a filmmaker. <laughs> it takes years. Yeah, like, it does. It took years from we're done the film to people actually, can watch it streaming. Yes. Yeah, it took and, a really and, long time. It's, but, so it's such a weird process, right? It's not in... It's definitely not one of those instant gratification kind of things. Mm. Um, a little bit more so with games mm. because you can have beta testers and they can give feedback and, and you can sometimes some people release work in progress versions mm. on, on the Atari H forums. Um, but movies kind of keep it under wrap more. Uh oh, so drum circle started? No, no, no. It's someone hammering. I okay, think. good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that happens. Because there is a park next to us. Yeah. And they're hammering. Okay, yeah. that's good. Because that means that'll stop. Uh, yeah. The drum circle does not stop <laughs> until Goes on for hours. it's very dark. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> until they realize that, oh, it's actually dark out now. Yeah. Uh -huh. Okay, so let's. Uh, did I say who's after? Yes, you did. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I always want to get one ahead so that uh, the next person knows. Because I didn't send the full schedule to everyone. Okay. Because things could change at yeah, any last you did, second. You weren't sure. yeah. They could get confused about it. But we're going to uh, call up Todd Fermansky, who's Revan Tooley, mm -hmm. um, for his Dragon's Cache for the 7800. And he is. Oh, I wish I copied this all onto the same page. I have to look back and forth. It's on Zoom. Oh, we're still on Zoom. Perfect. Good and he is ready. He is on point. Yeah. There we go. So dragon's cash. Bring him. Wait a second. Yep. Wait till he.